Sullivan powers the Blackhawks. Smith leads the Oilers. It is on. Hawks Oilers, Tuesday at 7.30 on Fox Sports Net. Well, the Toledo Rockets storming on to their home turf here at the Glass Bowl, set to take on 21st ranked Northern Illinois. It's cold. We've got a slight drizzle. The humidity, 65% winds. They were so blustery yesterday, Charles, but today only eight miles an hour, and they're coming from the west. The forecast, looking for some showers maybe later on this afternoon. Let's head down to the third member of our broadcast team, Sharon Thorsland. And Sharon, injuries have been such a big part of the Northern Illinois story this year. They've been seemingly losing a starter each week, but they finally got some good news on the injury front. Certainly did. Starting linebacker Javen Lee is available to play today. Now, he was a question mark coming into this game, nursing a strained hamstring. In fact, he was actually on crutches to start the week, but the trainers have cleared him to play, and he is ready to go. And that is definitely good news for a Husky defense that has really been desperate by injuries this season. Take a look at some of the guys out. Safety Akil Grant out today with a sprained knee. All-Mac defensive end Travis Moore out with a fractured ankle. And Nick Duffy, another All-Mac linebacker he's done for the season after breaking his ankle. Now you throw in the huge loss on offense of receiver kick returner Dan Sheldon. He led the nation in punt returns last year. And it makes you wonder, Dave, how the Huskies are sitting at 9-1 and one on this season. Yeah, that's a good question. Thanks, Sharon. We look forward to your reports today. Steve Azar plays great against Toledo. Northern Illinois, by the way, won the toss. They deferred to the second half. Toledo will get the ball first. And Lance Moore, one of the most dangerous kickoff returners in the MAC, has his hands on the football at the four-yard line. And he is bumped out of bounds, shy of the 20. So that's where the Toledo Rockets will start first and 10. You go right away. You look at the crowd keys of the game. Don't be fooled by play action grad. Grakowski, great play action faker. Burner on high octane. He has to go at full speed and win the battle of special teams. Bruce Gradkowski has continued the recent tradition of outstanding quarterback play for Toledo. He's coming off a sizzling performance the last time out, setting a rocket record and a glass bowl mark with six touchdown passes against Buffalo two weeks ago, a game in which Toledo piled up a school record 685 yards, a total offense. And he'll put it up to, on first down. The pass is complete to Dawson, and Dawson is hammered by Lionel Hickenbottom. Our craft keys for Toledo today, Charles. Put out the burners fire. Take that away from him. And then you have to have Lance Moore. He needs the big plays. Punt game puzzle. They do something that no team does in college football, and it's really unusual. Tom Amstutt wouldn't give us the craft recipe to it, but we're going <laughs> to figure it out. I'll try to today. We'll try to figure it out. Second down and 10. Again from the gun. Long count. Gradkowski. And there's the first reception by Moore. And Moore is up to the 27-yard line. It'll be third down and seven. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. And Bruce Gradkowski, that completion percentage, amazing. Over 71%, over 81% at home. And how about this offensive line? Sixth largest in the nation. Nick Kayser, one of the best in the MAC at the left tackle spot. And plenty of weapons for the Rockets. Dawson Moore, Odom, Charlton, and Clark the tight end today. Third down and three. Under center for the first time is Gradkowski. They go for the handoff, and nothing doing. Trinity Dawson is going to be stacked up as he tries the right side. No gain, and that's a good sign for Northern Illinois as they force Toledo three and out on the Rockets' first possession. Northern Illinois on that Mac symbol right there, there were 11 of their defenders right there to meet Dawson. And it was tough to get something going right there because all 11 of Toledo offensive guys were there. So there was no room to run. Great job by the defense of Northern of stopping that third and one. Brandon Hannum is the punter for the Rockets, a senior from Westerville, Ohio. He's second in the MAC with a punt average just under 45 yards per attempt. P.J. Fleck is back to receive it for Northern Illinois. High kick, it won't roll over, and Fleck will call the fair catch at the 35-yard line, so Northern Illinois has good field position on their first possession. They really do, and they have a chance now to get the ball going into Michael Turner's hands, and you know this is going to be where Toledo has to do a better job, not only stopping him, but getting a pass rush. Offensively for Northern Illinois, Josh Haldy, one of the most efficient passers in the country under setter. 
up front this is a good unit you've got a lot of youth on the left side and veterans on the right Jake for is one of the best in the back Turner Perry Hurd, Fleck and Cieslik the receivers for Haldy today And when you think about the premier quarterbacks in the MAC this year, some may have a tendency to overlook Josh Haldy, but that would be a big mistake. The junior from Madison, Ohio, is ranked in the top 20 nationally in passing efficiency, and he's already set the Northern Illinois single season records for attempts, passing yards, and 21 touchdowns. And here we go. It's Fleck, and he is into Toledo territory. Inside the 30, down to the 20. Six-yard line, and what a big play for Northern Illinois on their first offensive snap. Outstanding job. Brandon Heflin is going to come up and try to force that play and get Fleck in the backfield. He's blocked. Once that happens, Fleck is able to catch that ball. Great fake to Michael Turner, and they move it over. Good job. There's really no blocking. He has a convoy there, but nobody behind him. Great job of the fake to Michael Turner and then moving up the field by P.J. Fleck. Well, Northern Illinois would like to start this game and the way they started last year's game with Toledo. It was the end that was the problem. Here is Turner, and he slips down as he reaches the 25-yard line. Give the burner a gain of maybe a yard. Here's a look at the defense for the Toledo Rockets. This is a group that's really under pressure to get more pass pressure today. Franco Feely is back at the defensive end spot. He'll play with a broken hand. Lots of tackles made by the two guys inside, Jordan and Dodrill. And it's a big challenge today for the defensive secondary. Heflin on one corner may be the best of this group. Keon Jackson's had a good year at the rover spot. Second down to nine. Haldy on the play action. Going to send this one down the field to the end zone. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Keith Perry with a reception. And the Huskies strike first. Dave, I asked Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator, did you have any special plays for Perry in the game? Because Toledo is susceptible in the middle of the field. You're going to see Perry right here. He's going to work down the seam. And the linebackers with the play fake, you see all those guys that are held up and where they're running to, Michael Turner, but you have nobody back there. Patrick Body gets back too late. The throw was high. Fortunately for Northern, Keith Perry at 6'3 is able to go up and snag it. Azars had an extra point attempt blocked in each of the last two games after a streak of 52 in a row. He knocks that one through. Well, Keith Perry was a game-time decision on whether he was going to play today. He's already impacted this game. Northern Illinois strikes early. They lead at Toledo 7-0. Toledo Rockets head football coach Tom Amstutz finds his team behind very, very early. Keith Perry on the receiving end of a 25-yard touchdown strike from Josh Haldy, and Northern Illinois has a 7-0 lead. Well, this is what you're going to see. Hold it right there. That fake just sucks all those linebackers over, and that's what you got to have. 42 and 40 of the linebackers, when they see that fake to Michael Turner, which happened twice in the first drive, that's why that's six points right there. This is Moore with his back heel in the end zone. Going to bring it out. Slipped one tackle, and before he could really get rolling, is tripped up at the 24. For Lance Moore, he's got some jets, no question about that. Big play potential every time he touches the football. And it kind of fools you how fast he is, but when you see him live on tape, doesn't really give you a true dimension of what he can do. But boy, he makes great catches, and they say he doesn't miss much in practice. Great practice player as well as game time player. That's very important as well. Well, Toledo, their offense and their defense are supremely confident here at home where they've won 24 of their last 25 games. The only blemish on that record, a loss last year in mid-October to Miami, the newly crowned champs of the MAC East Division. Second possession now for Toledo, and they'll start from their own 24. Gradkowski, the Western Pennsylvania native, sophomore under center this time. Oh, a big play back to the 20-yard line. It's Drew coming in there and making the big-time hit for a loss of four. What I've always been impressed with Northern Illinois and their defense is how they fly to the football. They used to be the same way. If they could get to you, now these guys can get to you. They couldn't run before, and this is a great read by Randy Drew. Not only is he a great cover guy with six interceptions on the year, he will come up and smack you. Now Steve Odom, the redshirt freshman from Westerville South High School in Columbus, never really got going. Loss of three officially, second down and 13. From the gun, delayed handoff, Dawson. Not much, maybe back to the original line of scrimmage, the 23-yard line is Trinity Dawson tried the left side. And there's a prime example of Greg Kowski holding that ball in there in the backside 
in must pole contain. Dawson's gonna work one way. You may only have 10 people or eight people in the box. One, one of those guys is gonna have to stay backside to make sure that Gretkowski doesn't come back and pull that ball around and scramble for a big game. Toledo now facing third down and seven. In the bottom half of the MAC, 37%, their conversion rate. Gradkowski from the gun, fakes it to Dawson. It's heard. A check at Odom, and Odom is dropped quickly. It's the beast, Brian Atkinson with the stop. Well, they're, they're on these because this is the same offense that Northern runs as far as their bubble screens. And Northern is waiting, and they're just sneaking behind the blockers. Atkinson with that great speed. Look, there's no one to block him because Andrew Clark is going to work out. Clark is supposed to get him, and he goes up high to number nine, let Lionel Hickenbottom instead of Atkinson, who's the first guy there. Look at that unusual punt protect formation by Toledo. Hannum sends this one down the field. Collect no fair catch this time. Maybe he'll think better of it next time because Brandon Heflin was right there nanoseconds after Fleck caught the football. <laughs> big game means some big hits, especially on special teams. Fleck got the football, but he paid for it. We're back to the glass bowl in a moment. It's not just a game. It's an event kind of rainy on this mid-November late Saturday afternoon. Northern Illinois set to begin their second possession and Tom Amstutz his offense averaging 476 yards a game three and out on their first two possessions. The thing with this offense though they're so they're so high power they can come back on you and that's what they they know they can do that. The thing with Northern they have to just continue to play their game and make sure they distance themselves from this Toledo ball club. Here's Turner. Turner puts his head down and cracks across the 35, maybe the 36-yard line. A gain of two yards for Michael Turner, the senior from North Chicago, Illinois. You know, the interesting thing, Dave, about uh, Michael Turner is that he doesn't play a lot. The last few games, he's had to come out early. Now, with this defense playing like that, maybe that'll stop him, but he has been out of ball games late because they've been winning by big margins. Here you see the 100-yard rushing games. Turner right up there with 19 over his career. And don't forget that he began his career as the backup to Thomas Hennick. So here's Turner, and he has dropped in the backfield. Nowhere to go. It's Chaz Williams, the senior. Great penetration. That was a great job by Chaz Williams, and they say he's really come a long way into development. He's now the captain, the senior out of Muskegon, Michigan. Great job right there, playing off the block. That's how you play off a block. You have one shoulder free, you come off. Good job. Watch that. That's how you do it, young guys at home. You play, take on that block, and you come off, and you make the tackle, and then you can celebrate, too, if you want to. <laughs> Third down and 11. So a big opportunity here for the Toledo defense. They'll go with four wide this time. Trips to the right. Haldy from the gun. Joined in the backfield by Turner. And Turner gets it on the draw. And he'll take it up the middle. He's got the first down and more as he takes it out to midfield. So the Huskies, doesn't matter if it's third and long. They'll go to the burner and he gets it done. It's amazing. You can have third and long. And if you don't get to Michael Turner early, he's going to go. You got a young left side, Matt Rogers. And you're going to see these guys pull over and block and create space for Turner, just locking people up. Great job blocking there by Todd Gillani. But that gets it going. Those three interior linemen on a draw or any kind of delayed flat play is what makes that happen. Nose of the football at midfield. This is Paulie with the pass. And the pass is complete to Sam Hurd. And Hurd will take it to the Toledo 46-yard line. And Charles, they would really like to get Hurd a little bit more involved in the offense. After a, after a good start this year, he's only had seven catches combined over the last three games for 66 yards. They'd like to get him going, and that would make Fleck even more effective. It really will, because he's, got, he's averaging 15.3 yards a catch, and that's what they like. He is their deep play guy, but they haven't been able to get him the football. Gain of four, second down and six. Paulie under center. Here comes Turner. 
defense is up to the challenge for Toledo. Give them a gain of maybe a half yard. It'll be third down and five. Good job by Toledo there because I thought right here, you're going to see these, all those guys right there sticking and staying. And it looks like Michael Turner has somewhere to run, but no. Defensive backs coming up, linebackers coming up. Good job by the Toledo defense of finding that hole where he's going through. Dodro is one of them that was coming in there. Good job by them playing force run contain. Dodro leading tackler for Toledo. Fourth in the MAC came into play today with 102 stops. Here's Haldy on third down. The protection is good. Pass is in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Tried to get it to Fleck. Incomplete. It's fourth down now and five. You expect Fleck to catch that. He didn't drop many. That ball was coming off hot. Haldy had a lot of spice on that ball, and Fleck couldn't put it away. With the wet weather, it was behind him up high. He was able to go up and reach for it. Couldn't get it. All right, Joe Novak's going to go for a little field position game here not going to go for it on fourth and five for the 45 they will punt the ball instead more one of the most dangerous and it's a fake and the ball's on the turf it's loose still loose and we thought toledo had that corner of the market on fake field goals and fake punts and going for it on fourth down Northern Illinois rolls the dice there. Unfortunately for them, it comes up snake eyes, and Toledo gets the ball in great field position. And the ball never got to the uh, up back that they were trying to get it to. He just it never got to him. It snapped, and it actually hit him in the face mask. The ball is snapped to him, and he can't ever get it. There was blocking there that you could tell that they wanted to run that fake, but the ball hits him in the mask. <laughs> Tough luck on that play for Joe Novak. Here's Toledo now, the football at the 45. Only one wide receiver this time as they go with two tight ends, both lined up to the right. And here's Aston Martin with his first carry, and he's into the secondary and into Northern Territory. Ball's loose. Recovered by Toledo, and the Rockets keep possession. Now, this is your change of pace back. This guy comes in and gives you a little bit of spice to the gumbo. The problem is when you're on the sideline in a wet game, sometimes you're not ready, and the first carry is the one that you give up. Good job of him running the ball, but great tackle right there by hitting the bottom, and he just knocks the ball out. You know, Charles, I think they ruled him down on contact, but the ball may have been out. It came out before he was even down. Yeah, it's coming out before that. Nevertheless, that's a first down for Toledo at the Northern Illinois 45. Again, two tight ends, and again, the handoff whoa, goes to Aston Martin, and Hickenbottom came in there like a missile to finish the tackle. You know, you, you know teams that play hard. I mean, even when teams are losing, they're, they're, when I played at UCLA, it was the same way. Arizona didn't have a great offense, but you know Chuck Cecil was going to come hit you. Byron Evans, the Singleton Twins, this is how this Northern team plays. They've gotten better on offense and finally caught up with the physical defense, and they're fast. And you can see right there, Hickenbottom was coming up and trying to take his head off. Rob Spence, the offensive coordinator for Toledo, after having one wide receiver on the last two snaps, is going to go with four wide this time. And Gradkowski under center. Three-step drop. Pass is caught. Down to the 32-yard line. It's another Toledo first down. It's Odom with the reception. I like that call by Rob Spence, the offensive coordinator, because against a faster defense, sometimes your screens don't work. Run the receiver up, have him come back. It's an easy throw for the quarterback. Three step, boom. The ball is out, the receiver's turning at five, and then he's able to pick up five, six more after the contact. Good blocking by the line, but this is an easy throw and catch for the quarterback and the receiver in a wet game. From the gun this time, Moore is wide to the right as Odom comes closer to the formation. It's a design run for Gratkowski, trying to get to the corner. Slipped one tackle, but could not get away. It's a two-yard gain, second down and eight. And Rob Spence told us yesterday, Charles, that they would have some designed running plays for Gradkowski today, but not that many. Not that many because this defense is too physical and they're fast. Some teams you can suck in, but these guys are for Northern play such great defense where they stay outside, they say to their commitments, and that's what he was worried about. If I don't want a guy one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on, -one on my quarterback and get take him out of the ball game. There's more, and there's Odom in motion. Gradkowski from the gun, fakes it to Martin, rolling, still rolling. Finally throws, a pass is caught. 
at the 21 yard line near the first down and Holmes is there the tight end that's a good job by Chris Holmes to stand alive because Gradkowski had nowhere to throw and he just made himself available good faking now all of the Huskies are going to move one way but everybody's covered you see coverage there you see coverage there and then Chris Holmes right there just stays alive not John Travolta, but Chris Holmes. You gotta stay alive. If you're a receiver, you gotta get open. You gotta catch the football. Just outside the 20, just outside the red zone. Toledo looking for their first points. Gradkowski against short drop. Protection is outstanding. Here's the catch by Odom. Give him a gain of nine as he takes it to the 12-yard line of Northern Illinois. Dave, those three and outs, there were a lot of screens. I don't see the screens. I see the short five-yard out routes. I see the, the comeback routes. And that's what you got to have because this defense is tough. We're going to see two out routes right there. He, get, he has a choice. He can go out to Moore or he can go inside to Odom. Pick your poison. He goes to 80. Now Odom is an accounting major. He's trying to hold Northern Illinois' defense accountable on this drive. Second and a yard. And off nowhere to go. Martin was just swallowed up. And it was big Jason Frank, the senior from Lakeville, Minnesota. Jason Frank early in the year against Maryland was all over the football field as well as all these other defenders. But I remember him standing out. And that's the reason why, because he's not a big guy at 245 pounds, but he plays with leverage. And he gets under his blocker, big number 68, Nick Kayser, who's one of the best in the MAC. He takes him on and still is able to, with the other free arm, get Aston Martin. Third and four at the 15. Three wide receivers, two to the right. Here's the pass to Moore. He's got it. Tiptoes out of bounds. Thank you very much. First and goal now for Toledo at the Husky 9. Now you have the Huskies playing on their heels. Earlier, they were coming up able to blow up plays, but they can't do that now because those screens aren't coming, those bubble or wide receiver screens. You're seeing out routes. You're seeing quick drops. Lance Moore, boom, boom, boom. I'm out. Great timing. Running out there. That's how you do it. You step with the feet, you slide it out. Number one on wide receivers is the right number. Moore's been a monster over the last few games. 66 catches over his last six games for 796 yards. On first and goal, here's the handoff. Right up the middle, touchdown Toledo, Aston Martin. Aston Martin, woo! He's named after a car, and you can see why. Sleep, able to get after it. Right down the street from Motown, you can understand why. He has the ability to go to the house. And right there, it says he makes himself available. He's going to go and stop right there. If you see that hole, he knows where the hole is right away, the vision. And then he has a little bit of power at only 177 pounds. The sophomore out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, 100-meter state champion, the fastest guy on this team, but also with the nicest feet. Point after is up and good, and we are tied at seven with 2.57 to go here in the opening quarter. Aston Martin, his eighth rushing touchdown of the year, and it's a big one as it ties this battle for supremacy in the Mac West at seven. In refreshing flavors, just five calories. Enjoy life one sip at a time. I'm not just a butcher, I'm a meat cutter, and I love certified Angus beef. I've been sharpening knives since 1963. Those hands cut a lot of meat. I'm choosy, I'm picky, and I know exactly how thick an inch and a quarter is. Love cutting meat, love eating meat, love everything about it. <laughs> I know juicy, I know tender, and I love great marbling. I wouldn't give it to you if I wouldn't eat it myself. I can catch you the best steak and show you exactly how to cook it. And you can find me at Giant Eagle. We're gonna drive on down the road. All I wanna do a discount tire tip. Your tires can lose up to two pounds of pressure per month, even with good driving habits like mine. Stop by any discount tire location for a free air pressure check. They carry the world's best brands like Michelin, Yep Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Come drive through life with Discount Tire Company. All I want to do is drive. Discount Tire Company, let's drive. Aston Martin's nine-yard touchdown run ties this game at seven. Charles, let's take a look at his quick feet. I don't know if he can dance, but the feet work here. The footwork, excuse me, shows you what he can do. He works inside. Look at that. Both of the feet together. You normally teach people not to do it, but he's just able to get inside. Boom. And then he's gone. Watch this move, how quick it is out of that. And then he's gone again. 
He's making moves with his feet. His eyes tell him that he can do. Some guys can think about it, but they can't do it. Great footwork, great touchdown by Aston Martin. I bet you he can do some moves on the dance floor, too. <laughs> Well, Hannum, who handles the punting, also kicks off for Toledo. Short kick. Across the 30. Stopped at the 34-yard line. That was Jeremy Pugh. And Billy Malone stop for Toledo. So Northern Illinois has the football back. They grabbed a quick 7-0 lead in this game. The last time they had the football, they were in Toledo territory, but misfired on a fourth down fake punt attempt Toledo took advantage they romped in for a touchdown and now we'll see what the Huskies have cooked up we expect a lot of points in this game <laughs> yeah I think we do with both of these ball clubs with the offenses that they have this is Turner great blocking inside for Turner and he shoots on up to the 44 yard line he is very close to a first down now he may not have the footwork that Aston Martin has, but when he, he has the zero to 60, like Aston Martin, he can really run. Four, four, five, he's been clocked at. They do a good job of giving him space, and then he just hits it. He doesn't really waste time, David. When he finds his hole, he turns those shoulders and he's able to get up the field. And these offensive linemen love blocking for a guy like that. They'll stick and stay, stick and stay. We know Michael Turner will make him pay. Second down, less than a yard. It's Turner again. Going to bounce this outside. And you were talking about his deceptive speed. Once he gets rolling, he can really pick up a lot of quick yards. Bangs it outside for the first down, an apparent first down. But we have our first flag of the afternoon down at midfield. And it looks like it might be against Toledo. Yep. Late hit against the Rockets. Todd Gerlings is our official today. So the mark off will come from the point of the infraction. After the play, personal foul, defense, 15 minutes, first down. Uh, you can't give away free yards to a Northern Illinois, you know, offense that's already got a lot of ability to get down the field. That's one of the things that will burn up Lou West and Tom Amstutt because you cannot give up that kind of a play after a big play has already been made or first down. So following the penalty, the line of scrimmage is now the 37. The fake to Turner this time. Here's Haldy on the pass. A deep one, incomplete. Trying to slip it to Keith Perry who caught the touchdown and Antonio Malone had the coverage for Toledo that was better coverage there by Toledo and what they're going to do with Keith Perry he's the H back now he used to be a wide receiver they moved him inside he's a bigger guy but he still has ability and speed he just does a good job and I think Toledo wanted pass interference because he was pushing Malone before the ball got there second and ten comes Turner to the short side and he'll take it across the 35 and down to the 34 yard line third he's, down and seven and he's pointing at his feet he, his shoes he needs some new shoes on because that's the one thing with this turf it's very slippery and you got to come to Toledo with a lot of different cleats he's probably gonna have to go with the longer astral turf shoes he's going to the sideline now because he can't get his footing especially when he's going outside all right so some new treads will be coming on for the burner A.J. Harris now enters the game. Baldy from the gun on third and seven. Baldy fights forward near the line of scrimmage. That won't go officially as a sack, but pressure on the quarterback is key today for the Toledo defense. They really have to do a good job of getting after Haldy. And, you know, Haldy is one of those guys who I think is one of the most underrated quarterbacks, not only in the MAC, but in the in, in, in college football, just because he, he commands an offense that's beat a lot of big time teams. You don't hear a lot about him, but that was a great job. And look at this. The second time they're going for it on fourth down. All right. Azar has this kind of range. It would have been a 51 yard attempt. Instead, Northern Illinois going with four wide on fourth and seven. Haldy from the gun, cranks it, fires, intercepted. Toledo comes up with the interception. It's Antonio Malone. And that's the 20th interception of the year for the Rockets defense. Great job by the Toledo defense of getting back there, making sure that they get an interception. Good job there. I mean, you, you have to play 
and be around there. And this is where they're just playing coverage, playing coverage. Now, that was a hard throw by Haldy, but great job by the secondary of just staying in coverage in their zone. And when the ball comes out hot like that, those guys back there have to come up with the catches. Well, Haldy, his touchdown interception ratio outstanding coming into this game. 36 scoring strikes to just 12 interceptions, but Malone gets the pick. And Toledo dodges a bullet, and they'll take over first and 10 at the 28. Handoff, Dawson. And Dawson's into the secondary and near a first down at the 39-yard line. Let's head down to the sidelines on, for an injury update on one of the massive offensive linemen for the Rockets, Sharon. That's right, Eric Fossen. He was taken off of the field just a few moments ago, went into the locker room. I spoke with the Toledo trainer. He said that Fossen tweaked his shoulder on Toledo's last offensive drive. They took him back there to run a couple of tests, give him some treatment, but they say he should be all right and should be back in the game. All right, Sharon, thanks. Fossen is the tallest and heaviest offensive lineman in Toledo history. 6'8", 352. We've come to the end of the first quarter. We're heading to the second at the glass bowl. All knotted at seven. Today's presentation of Mid-American Conference Football, the game of the week, is brought to you by First Energy. Our energy is working for you. By Huntington Banking, Investments, Insurance. GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. The Cleveland Clinic. By Office Max, you supply the ambition, we'll supply everything else. MBNA, the official credit card of the Mac. By Kraft Foods. And by Giant Eagle. Make every day taste better. Down on the Toledo sidelines, the defensive backs. Trying to get fired up. This game tied at seven. Toledo offense on the field at the 37 yard line, facing second down in the yard. And Trinity Dawson will pick up the first down as he drags tacklers down to the Rockets 40. After the first two drives, Toledo has just really done a great job of running the offense in a better, much better way and really being more consistent in the passes. They've kind of gotten away from the bubble screen. But right here, Trinity Dawson has shown a lot more power. Still a young guy as a sophomore. They think he can put on a few more pounds. He's sick, 5'10", 195 pounds. First down and 10. Empty backfield this time. Tight end comes in motion. That's Andrew Clark. Radkowski the pass to Odom. Odom picking his way. He's free down the sidelines for a big gainer for Toledo. What a great burst as he takes it to the 34 yard line. That's a gain of 16. Now they're pulling everything out of their playbook. They were struggling with the screen. Now they put Andrew Clark out there. They have everybody over there overloading it. And then what they're able to do is get Odom free. Andrew Clark right there with a great block. And then watch that block. Receivers making blocks. Whoa! But that's a good one there. And it allows him to get up the field. Kenley Horton and Andrew Clark spring that play. Odom really coming into his own in their last game against Buffalo. He had nine catches for 143 yards. First and 10 from the 34. Gradkowski, the sophomore from Pittsburgh, changing the play. And here comes Dawson trying to bounce it outside, but right into the waiting arms he runs into Jason Frank. Jason play, Frank plays that in. I mean, you know, at 6'5", 245 pounds. Like I said earlier, not a very big guy, but these are the these are how defensive ends have kind of gone now. There are guys that are rangy and long, and you can put a few more pounds on them. You think of Jason Babin. You think of other guys around this league that are big and tall, but they also have the ability to get up the field and rush the pass. Jason Frank missed two games earlier this year after suffering a bit of a knee injury against Central Michigan. He looks pretty quick out there this afternoon. Four wide receivers now, three to the right. Radkowski, the pass to Clark, and he is immediately popped out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Brian Atkinson, the junior from Chicago, with the tackle. Uh, you know, Clark just went over there and demanded a bone. Said, hey, I'm blocking for you. I'm doing everything you asked me to do. Why don't you just throw me one? <laughs> and he's playing against, you know, somebody in uh, his home state. He's from Naperville, Illinois. He has to catch a rock against them. So when they go home, hey, you catch, catch any against Northern? Yeah, I caught a couple. I had some good blocks, too. 10 of 10 to start this game. 
was 23 of 25 for 92 percent against Buffalo. So Gradkowski is, to say the least, is in the zone. Here's Moore, and he turns it inside the 20. Ball's loose. Atkinson falls on it. So the turnover, and the Huskies have the football. That that is why they're plus 12 in the in. In turnover margin because they go after the football that northern defense will get after you and get the football away from you now Moore thinks there's a face mask penalty pending and that is the call against northern Illinois you know Dave I thought Moore was going to be able to outrun the angle of the defensive back and maybe that's why he wasn't able to he's working across the field on the slant route or and just going across he catches that ball and I think right there those three guys I thought he was going to get in here and be able to get by him and then right there the face mask comes and that's why he got stopped. Then the ball is going to come out there late. Hickenbottom clearly got the mask so Toledo will keep possession. During the run. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Penalties enforced from the end of the run. First down. That's a huge play against Northern. That is a huge play. And that's what Joe Novak is saying. I know it's a face mask, but what about the fumble? If the fumble came before the face mask, then you have a reason to, to argue that point. That's a bang, bang, bang call, and that was a good call by the officials. It was a good call. First and goal now for Toledo at the Northern Illinois 7. We're tied at 7 early in the second quarter. Toledo controls its own destiny. They win out, they win the West. Northern Illinois needs to beat Toledo, and they still need a little bit of help. Three wide receivers to the right this time for Gradkowski. And you can see the difference over the last two drives for the Rockets' offense. Empty backfield, Gradkowski, quarterback draw, designed run all the way. And he is to the goal line, but not in. A gain of six, it'll be second and goal from inside the one. I thought he was going to get in there. <laughs> Boy, you know, he worked and worked and worked and then almost gets in there. You know, the line just shows everything. He does a great job of getting back and really selling that quarterback screen, I mean quarterback draw. And then at the end, there's about five Huskies, and they're holding them from that inch yard that he has to make. Look at this. He's going to just put his head down and try to get in there. There's a gang of Huskies holding him back. Second and goal. Long count. Dawson. Touchdown, Toledo. Trinity Dawson, one yard touchdown run. And the Rockets are in front for the first time this afternoon. Well, the two fourth down plays that Northern had, the fake punt, and then going for it on fourth down when they don't make it, may come back to hurt them. Because at both times, Toledo comes back and scores a touchdown. Once again, Andrew Clark with the kickoff doesn't allow any penetration. And then inside, those linemen just sticking and stand, pushing back, pushing back. Trinity Dawson gets in for six. Dawson with his eighth rushing touchdown of the year. And Jason Robbins adds the extra point. So after Northern Illinois scored first, Toledo now has scored 14 unanswered points, and they lead Northern Illinois 14-7. Wow. Husky in the house, but Toledo leads the game 14-7 early in the second quarter. Northern Illinois took their entire allotment of tickets from Toledo for this game, but they didn't uh, have too much to cheer about moments ago as Trinity Dawson, a one-yard touchdown run, capped an eight-play, 72-yard drive that eclipsed nearly three and a half minutes. And now Northern Illinois set to receive the football. Line drive kick from the five. Andy Drew is upended as he reaches the 20 yard line. I don't know how he held on to the football. He went airborne, got undercut. And boy, I thought the ball was going to come out before he went down. Well, I'd have to say Gradkowski obviously has had the better of the matchup in the early going, Charles. I would love to see Gradkowski at practice in seven on seven because I bet you they don't drop because the receivers are so sure handed. 
I bet you they can go days where it's 100 percent two or three days in a row unless the defense has something to do with that. They probably do. First down and 10 from the 20 yard line. Haldy the handoff to Michael Turner. And Turner with a gain of three and a half yards will be second down and six. Now two of the most efficient quarterbacks not just in the Mac but in the nation going at each other today and touchdowns even and pass attempts not much of a disparity there as well and low interception to touchdown ratio a touchdown to interception ratio and that's always a good thing if you're a quarterback here comes Turner again Turner again on the carry Jordan on the stop and he cracks over the 25 yard line but it's still five yards shy of a first down it'll be third down and five and Turner He's touched the ball a lot here in the first half. Nine carries already for 37 yards. Last year when these two teams met Charles, he carried the ball 41 times. So what Toledo is doing is there's one guy getting to him, and then there's always two or three. And if the first guy gets there, he's trying to grab his legs. Because I don't care how fast you are, if you get the leg tail, he's not going anywhere. Third down and four. Baldy from the gun. Great protection. Fires. Passes caught. It's flat. First down up to the 34. Well, you know you always have a security blanket as a quarterback. And P.J. Fleck is that to Josh Haldy. And, you know, that's why he catches so many balls. He always makes himself available. Now, there's pressure coming. He sits back and waits and waits. And then he's open. He finds his receiver. You know, they protected him. He was able to set, set, set. Didn't get get his feet flat. He kept those feet, kept on his toes. That's why he was able to make that throw. First down and 10 following the third down conversion. Turner trying to turn the corner on the right side. Nowhere to go. A lot of blue and gold. Turner on the carry. And it's Anthony Jordan, Jordan the sophomore the from Whitehall, Ohio, leading the way. They are Toledo, that is, is going to force them to throw the football. They're going to put eight, nine men in the box and know that you got to stop Michael Turner. Let's see how many guys hit him. One, two, three, four, five. And then you don't see the other guys coming over. There's eight or nine guys always lurking around. Here's Jordan. First year starter at inside linebacker. Took some snaps last year at defensive end. Here's Haldy on the short drop. Crossing pattern. And it's flat. And Dodro won't let him get away. And he drops him shy of the first down. Anthony Jordan and Dodro, they struggled in the passing game early in the year. They're much better run defenders. But lately they have been playing the pass a lot better. Other than that long touchdown that was given up and didn't look like their responsibility. But on this crossing route, this is when the receiver and the linebacker have to go after each other. And normally the linebacker loses that matchup, but Dodro gets him in his sights, breaks down, and makes the sure tackle. On third and five, four wide for Haldy. Corner blitz, picked up well. Haldy going to tuck it. Now he's going to let it go, and it's intercepted. Pass is intercepted by Heflin. Second interception by the Toledo secondary here in the first half. Great job by Heflin with the setting back there, waiting and waiting. But that wasn't a very good throw by Josh Haldy. Go with your first mind. Just try to run the football. You're almost there. Don't throw that ball. He sees that he doesn't get it. Even if you don't get to the first down marker, don't throw it back the other way. You can't do that. Heflin now 16 interceptions in his career at Toledo. That's third best ever for the Rockets. Toledo with a touchdown lead and the ball. Interception to stop Northern Illinois and gives Toledo great field position. Charles, I thought Holdy might run this ball. I thought he should have because it wasn't that long of a play, and it almost looks like it's tipped, but it's not. He's throwing back against his body. Heflin makes himself available. That play right there, if you're the receiver, Chanton, Chanton Powers, you got to either come forward, but that was not a good decision by Josh Holdy. Brandon Heflin now with five interceptions this year. Moving up the charts, now with 16 in his outstanding career for the Toledo Rockets on first down. Kowski on the play action. Going to send this one down the hash. Touchdown, Lance Moore. How's that for turning a turnover into a big play? I love that call because you come back and you go for it. You get a big turnover, and then you 
pull out one of those nice play action passes and it just fools everybody. We talked about it earlier with Jankowski. You cannot let him fool you. Look at all those guys that get sucked inside and they're trying to run back to their responsibilities. It's one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have a chance against Lance Moore if you hesitate. A drill has broke the freshman against a guy like Lance Moore. Uh, uh. Lance Moore with the touchdown catch. The extra point is up by Jason Robbins. And Toledo has now scored 21 unanswered points. And they have their largest lead of the game at 14 points. Gradkowski to Moore, 8.51 to go in the first half. Toledo 21, Northern Illinois 7. Well, there's a rare shot of Lance Moore not in motion on the Toledo <laughs> bench in the moments following his 40-yard touchdown reception moments ago that extended Toledo's lead to 21-7. To well, and you look also to, you know, three touchdowns versus Buffalo, and this guy can make plays. You know, and you put him up against a freshman and you do the play-action fake and you sell it with Gretkowski, it's going to be open. It's just you getting the ball there and he, he making the catch. How about how about Moore in the, the upset win over Pittsburgh? He had 15 Fifteen catches in that game. You know, he was nominated for the Academic All District team, which is the precursor to the Academic All American team. So he's a, a bright individual as well. Hopefully, he'll get good news on that front in early December. And Drew will take a knee. So Northern Illinois will start this drive at the 20 yard line. Charles, last year when these two teams met in DeKalb, Northern Illinois raced out to a 17-0 lead, and then Toledo came all the way back to win 33-30. Now Toledo, here at home, has built the early edge. How does Northern Illinois turn the momentum around? Getting back to what they do well, that's Michael Turner, but also getting the ball in the P.J. Flex and trying to get those intermediate routes and not go against the grain of their bodies like they're doing and doing things that they're not accustomed to, like going for it on fourth down, which they don't do a lot of. So obviously down two touchdowns, you don't break the game plan. You still want to give Turner his touches. For example, Turner takes it to the 23 for a gain of three. That's his 11th carry of the first half. It'll be second down and seven. Well, Dave, if, if you give it to him two times in a row, generally he's averaging 5.2 yards. That's a first down. So, you know, they started out the game going away from him, but I think you have to keep the ball in his hands and then really start play action passing and then working into those intermediate 10 yard, 15 yard routes where Toledo is vulnerable. He went off for 163 yards and two touchdowns last week at Buffalo, including a 60 yard gain on the first play from scrimmage. Here's Turner again. Good blocking up front. Turner breaks one tackle and give him forward progress to the 27 yard line and ran out of one of his shoes. And while he looks for a shoe, we'll send it down to Sharon to talk about the Huskies' problems here in Toledo. Yeah, the Glass Bowl has not exactly been kind to the Huskies. They've only been able to win here one time. They've had 15 losses over the years. The last time and only time they won was way back in 1972. Richard Nixon was president, has Huskies head coach Joe Novak. He was a high school coach. Tom Amstutz was a senior in high school. Novak and the Huskies, though they say that that set does not mean much to them. They truly believe they can win, but they've got their work cut out for them here today. All right, thanks a lot, Sharon. Here's Haldy. Now he will tuck it. He will run it. He'll pick up the first down. And discretion is the All better part of valor as he goes out of as bounds at Illinois the 32 yard line. One more point about 1971. In that year, Joe Novak was the Ohio High School Coach of the Year at Warren Reserve High School. Tom Amstutz was a senior at Whitmer High. <laughs> Oh, man. And, you know, the, the other thing with Michael Turner today is I think the weather has bothered him also, the field conditions, because he was worrying about the shoes earlier. Let's see if putting back on another shoe and a clean sock will help him. This is Harris. Harris reads his blocks beautifully, and now he's got close to first down yardage up at the 42-yard line. A.J. Harris, I guess we'll just call him the afterburner. <laughs> He does a great job here, though, and a couple of weeks ago against Ball State, he had 106 yards, and one of the reasons why these guys are so effective is they cheer for each other, but they also are patient in behind their blocking. Good job of following, following Matt Rogers, and then at the last second, you move away and you find that hole. 
Harris scored a touchdown in last year's game against Toledo. He's got good yardage again. He lowers his shoulder as he goes out of bounds and has a, a good gainer up to the 49 yard line. That's a pickup of seven. And Harris has a little bit more of the wiggle and the cutback ability that Turner sometimes doesn't have. But he, he gives you a good change of pace, almost like the backs for Toledo with the Aston Martins and the Trinity Dawson's. You get a change of pace, and the defense has to get used to seeing this guy and what he does and how he does it. A two-to-one ratio runs to passes here in the first half for Northern Illinois. Touched on Harris in his background. He was the Illinois High School track and field hurdler of the year. Unable to hurdle the defensive front that time for Toledo a gain of a yard. That's a great point you bring up Dave. Most of these athletes that you see on the college level have played one or two sports sometimes three sports and that's the thing that you see the young kids now getting away from it only specializing in one sport from the age of 10 or 11 on and I really think in talking to the coaches and when you talk to different programs they like to see a guy that's athletic and can really do a lot of different things because it's easier for him to learn and assimilate what they want him to do. Yeah, Rob Spence the offensive coordinator for Toledo was making that point to us yesterday tried to flip it over the middle to Fleck incomplete. And it was Keon Jackson who made the defensive stop for Toledo. Well, Keon was all on P.J. Fletch's back before the ball got there. He was covering him tight. And I think P.J. wanted a flag, but he just, you know, he runs with him. He does what a defensive back is supposed to do. They put their hand on you, almost like they're patting you on the back, and then they reach over. That's a good job by Keon Jackson. Keon Jackson. Recruited by Toledo's defensive coordinator Lou West. Now it's third down and nine for Northern. Four wide receivers, and they go with the handoff to Harris. And they stayed home up front. It's Williams again making the big stop. And Northern Illinois is going to have to punt. I'm really surprised by that call because they've gone for it on fourth down twice, and then they come back with that. And I really thought they were going to go up the field the way they had the, the offense spread out. This defense here, they understand we have to stop the run. If we stop the run, like Lou West said yesterday, we make them one-dimensional, that's when we're at our best. Anthony Gallagher set to punt the football. And this time he does send it down the field. That ball will be fielded at the eight-yard line. Moore picked it up. Shirts arrived after a punt return of about three yards. So now Toledo, with their largest lead at 21 to 7, has the football back. Five and a half minutes to go before halftime. And we've got an injured Husky down at the nine. Well, Toledo got off to a slow start today, Charles, but they have come roaring back. And it was a combination of interceptions and big plays that led to this 14-point edge. Hey, Mac fans, go long with the MBNA Mac MasterCard. Call toll-free 1-866-GET-MBNA now to apply for a Mac MasterCard and get a Mac Spectator Chair free with your first qualifying transaction of at least $25. Call now, toll-free 1-866-GET-MBNA. And be sure to mention the priority code, QJQ4. That's QJQ4. Northern Illinois Husky number 58, Christian Tropa, they held off the field. And the injured player for Northern Illinois is Kirsten Strothman, the junior from Rochelle, Illinois. And he has been seeing the field quite a bit in this defensive unit for the Huskies that's been decimated by injuries. Yeah, they have a lot of injuries on their defensive unit, and they needed him to play a lot more than they thought he, you know, he's playing behind Jason Hawkins, but he's playing a whole lot of snaps. Here's the handoff. It's Dawson. Oh, Dawson makes a great move at the point of attack and slithers his way up to the 16-yard line for a five-yard gain. Well, Strothman would have started in today's game if Javen Lee had been unable to go, and injuries have really been a big part of the Northern Illinois story this year. Look at all the members of their squad that are out for the year. Duffy, Akeel Grant tried to go this week, just couldn't make it. Travis Moore might return at some point this season. Cooksey, Frank, and Lee all sucking it up. They're out there, but they're banged up. 
on second down. Here's Dawson. Another great cutback. And he's got the first down. Fighting his way all the way out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. And this is not the same Northern defense that you saw earlier in the year against Alabama or Maryland and all those other teams because they've had so many injuries. Now, you can't make excuses. The guys that come in have to be prepared to play. But when you're playing a black like Aston Martin and Trinity Dawson, look, boom, then I'm gone. I mean, the play before was so nice, but that was also a great run because he works and works and works. And we talk about patience and running back. Sometimes they want to press the hole too hard. You got to let it open up. And when it does, you hit it. Now we got an official timeout on the field for just a moment. Both of our teams, Northern Illinois and Toledo, with their full complement of three timeouts as we move to the latter stages of the first half. Boy, Trinity Dawson showing his taillights on this drive, a couple of really elusive runs. Well, you know, we talk about Aston Martin's feet and what he can do, but Trinity Dawson shows a little bit on his own. For the latest in Mac news, notes, and stats, plus multimedia and interactive features, visit the Mac's website at mac-sports.com. That's mac-sports.com. Clock running again, first and ten. Line of scrimmage for Toledo, their own 26. Three wide receivers all to the left. Here's Dawson again. And there's just nowhere to run in there that time as the Huskies' defensive front came up big. I just like how both of these teams' defenses, you know, when they have a guy wrapped up, they are, they are taught very well because you, you have a chance. Sometimes you hit a guy, second, third, fourth guy gets there. Watch how they converge on him. You know, he's going to work backside and come back over. Then you got one, two, three, four, five, six. All of those little marks right there. And that's what happens when you get a guy hitting you. Trinity Dawson's going to fill it tomorrow. Prince Holman made the stop. He blocked an extra point last week for Northern Illinois at Buffalo on second down and 10. Oh, good catch. Bumped out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Charlton with the reception. Chris Charlton. Bad throw, great catch. You know, we talk about Greg Kowski having great percentages, but he has some receivers sometimes to save you. Now, this is not a good throw, but Charlton goes up and gets it. Doesn't help his average, but it helps the completion percentage for Greg Kowski. Uh, Bruce Gradkowski has completed passes to 13 different receivers this year. Charlton now with eight catches on the season. Amazing numbers last week. It's still perfect. 13 of 13 today. On a wet day like today, you would expect that number to not be that high. Third down and six. Big down for Northern Illinois' defense. Throwing on the run. Wide open. It's Odom. And he is dragged down at the 25-yard line. How did he get behind the Husky secondary? The minute they saw Gretkowski working up the field, that's when the defensive backs kind of freeze and everybody else. Odom is going to come from over here, and he's going to run through there. It's going to be covered, too. Now, when they see Gretkowski start to run, that's going to fool them into thinking, okay, we have to make that play. Now, he's just going to work up the field. Defensive guy move around, and they see he loses him in space. That guy right there just loses him. A huge pickup on third down. Here's Toledo threatening to add to their 21-7 lead. Inside of three minutes to go before halftime. Play action. Great ball fake. Gradkowski on the rollout. All kinds of time to the end zone. Well, Steve Odom had some room back there, but the pass sailed beyond the out-of-bounds line. And that, Charles, <laughs> is his first incomplete pass of the game. Wow, a broken play before because the defensive back loses you in space. A second play where he gets the guy in the back of the end zone, throws it a little too hot, hot and hard, but almost a perfect 15 of 15 a day doesn't happen. He's slacking. <laughs> Completed his first 14 passes today for 176 yards and a touchdown. And he had a touchdown there. He had Odom open in the back of the end zone. We'll see what happens now. Second down and 10. From the gun. Bubble screen. Here's Moore. Inside the 20. Inside the 15. Inside the 10 before he's finally dragged down at the seven-yard line. A gain of 19. It's first and goal for the Rockets. And look how open now these screens are because they've done so much more with them. Now, earlier, Moore would have been met right here, not now. He's able to get up the field. And it doesn't look like he's moving fast, but he can really run. Gradkowski works the other way. He sells the play fake with his head. That time, he works to the left and comes back to the right. That's just enough room.
to give Lance more room to get up the field. Well, this Northern Illinois defense spending a lot of time on the field. They're undermanned to begin with, and Toledo making them pay. There's Dawson. And Dawson able to squeeze out maybe a yard before he's brought down. Northern needs a big turnover here, or a game-changing play, because those two fourth down plays earlier in the quarter or half have really hurt them. And Toledo is using a nice ball control game. When they get a chance, they'll go down the field. But they've really worked and stayed with their game plan against this Northern defense. That was a big stop in there by Ray Smith. He's at the strong safety spot for Akeel Grant today. This is his second career start. Last week in his first career start, he had 14 tackles against Buffalo. Second and goal at the five. Fake to Dawson. Radkowski to roll out the throw. Touchdown Toledo. It doesn't get much easier. Clark with a touchdown reception, his sixth of the year. What a great ball fake. It really is. Some people do it with vertical passing game. They do it with the play faking and the horizontal passing game, which creates space for your receiver. By Gradkowski working one way, coming back around, creating the open, and getting it in for six. So the lead balloons to 28 to 7 now for Toledo. And Bruce Gradkowski has been virtually perfect in the first half. It is unbelievable to watch. When you read the numbers and you say 80%, I'm thinking there's no way. And then you come and watch this guy play live on a wet day like today. This Toledo Ball Club, Tom Amstutt told us, we're going to be fired up. And this is what I talk about by creating some space. You work yourself, hold it right there. When you, he faked there, then he comes around. Where is that? Andrew Clark just sneaks out. And that's what's going to give you your touchdown. Everyone goes over with the back that he fakes to, and the man that has responsibility, the minute he takes a second step or he pauses, then he's done. And that's why that's six, and that's why this guy is so effective. One of the things we talked about in regards to Gradkowski is you know, he is the second leading rusher on this Toledo Rocket squad. He's got great speed himself, so once he was able to deliver the good ball fake and sprint out to the right, He's got the wheels to create some space between himself and any pass rusher. He really does. And what he also does is, you know, he distributes the ball like a point guard. How many times did Rob Smith say that yesterday when you talked to him? This guy is like a basketball point guard. He can distribute it, and he doesn't turn the ball over. One of the things that really impressed the coaches for Toledo when they were recruiting Bruce Gradkowski was the ability to dunk the basketball. He was going up above the rim and jamming it home at only 6'2". Well, and he, the explosion, the explosiveness in his legs, but also creates, that's a guy that can throw on the run. Guys that don't have that leg drive and that lift, that's why Doug Flutie, when you see him, he'll jump up and still throw the ball 30 yards down the field. That's what you get out of a guy that has power in his legs. It makes you wonder about some of the other schools that just really missed the boat on Gradkowski. Only two other 1AA scholarship offers. Think about this school. Chris Wallace, Tavares Bolden, Brian Jones, now Gradkowski, all the same kind of quarterback. Baldy swings it out to Turner. Turner breaks one tackle and gets up to the 27-yard line. They've done a very good job of just taking away Michael Turner and not allowing him to get past that second or third level. Uh, there's been a few runs where he's gotten into the secondary, but for the most part, they've done a very good job of tackling, making sure they're sure tackling. Clock continues to run. We're inside of a minute. Northern Illinois has all of their timeouts. That pass is incomplete. Paulie tried the out pattern to Chatone Powers. And now it's third down and three. And Dave, now they may get out of their game plan some because they see the score. Coaches will say, well, we're going to stick with our game plan. But when you get down by three touchdowns, sometimes you change what you thought you were going to do. You think you can stick with the run. That's one thing. But then you get out of your element, and you got to put the ball up the field and make some plays. Joe Novak going with three wide this time on third and three. Passes incomplete and nearly intercepted. Anthony Jordan nearly had the interception. So now Toledo with a 28 to 7 lead is going to get the football back. Rodney Gamby, Gamby with a big stick. This is what I'm talking about. Now there are guys aren't making plays and Anthony Jordan almost comes up with the pick. Here's 
Gallagher set to punt the football. Lance Moore back to receive it. Toledo number one in the nation in their punt return average. This time Moore will not get a chance to return it as the ball will finally roll dead just inside the 30 yard line. So 32 seconds remain in the first half. Toledo has all three of their timeouts. And the way Gradkowski's going, Charles, you gotta take a shot up the field, don't you? <laughs> the way he's 14 of 15? The way he's throwing the football, I would not be surprised if they go up the field and try to get a big play right here. And Lance Moore would be the guy that you would go with. He's matched up against Randy Drew in this, in this formation. Kowski, two touchdown passes, one to Lance Moore that covered 40 yards, and another to the tight end, Andrew Clark, a five-yard reception on Toledo's last possession. And here comes Trinity Dawson. And Dawson will take the football up to the 38-yard line. So Tom Amstutz apparently quite happy with a 28-7 lead, and the Rockets will head back to the locker room after a well-played first half. Very well. I mean, you know, these guys have come out. He said they were going to be prepared to play. Tom Amstutz wants to hear it from the crowd, and our halftime activities are coming up. We'll talk about basketball at Northern Illinois. Antoine Dinka will visit with him. We'll have scores from around the MAC, and we'll check a first half full of stats and highlights that will be heavily flavored by the Toledo Rockets. Let's send it down to, to Sharon, who's standing by with the head coach of Northern Illinois. Coach, the Glass Bowl has not been a kind place to you guys. Definitely not that way today. you got a pretty big hole to climb out of here. We really do. We, you know, some big passes, of course, a couple turnovers there, and uh, it's too bad. We had a great start, though. We just haven't finished it. Seems like the defense has had a, a trouble slowing down their passing attack. What adjustments do you make at the half? Well, they're really good. we got to be smart back. There are a couple of those big passes shouldn't be. A lot of the underneath stuff they're good at. I mean, they're completing 70%. We just have to be, you know, not give up the big plays. All right, good luck to you, Coach. Thank you. All right, let's go to the break. It's 28-7, to Toledo leading Northern Illinois. We'll come back with more of Dave and Charles after this. Last year, one man changed the way fans see Bulls games. Free tickets tend to do that. Presenting the return of Win Norm's tickets. Norm still got great seats to the games, and he's still got that same problem. I gotta work. Here's your chance to win two tickets to a home Bulls game. Telecast on Fox Sports Now. To enter, log on to FSNChicago.com. Hey, if you want to win, you got to enter. Max Mats and Mitsubishi. For more than 15 years, we've been one. In fact, no one in the Midwest has more or has sold more new Mitsubishis for less than Max Madsen. Let us prove it. Wake up and drive now to Max Madsen Mitsubishi, 2424 West Ogden Avenue in Downers Grove, just a half a mile east of 355. Now, get 0% financing plus a seven-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty. Gonna drive on down the road. All I wanna do is drive. There's a lot of things to see in life, and you can trust Discount Tire Company to take you there. They carry the world's best brands like Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. And their quality of service shows why customer satisfaction is still number one. So come drive through life with Discount Tire Company. All I wanna do is drive. Discount Tire Company, let's drive. I am so hungover. And you've got to be at work in an hour. How come you feel so good? You drank more than I did. I took Chaser, remember? Chaser? Chaser Caplet. You take them right after you start drinking, and you're guaranteed never to get a hangover. Chaser is clinically proven safe and effective. It absorbs hangover-causing toxins like a sponge, so you can wake up feeling alert and energetic, not hungover. Looks like you should have taken Chaser, too. Buy Chaser today at GNC, Walgreens, and these other fine stores. When you think of flooring, think Century Tile. Visit Century Tile for extra values this weekend. Hurry in for special in-store savings. When you think of tile, think Century Tile. Fast C2 
sports sedan with a supercharged compressor engine. To catch one, you gotta be in one. When you think of flooring, think Century Tile. Visit Century Tile for extra values this weekend. Hurry in for special in-store savings. When you think of tile, think Century Tile. In Toledo, where the Rockets have a commanding 28-7 lead over 21st-ranked Northern Illinois. Dave Weekly, Charles Arbuckle. Huge game for both these teams today, Charles. Toledo controls their own destiny. They win out. They'll host the MAC championship game against Miami. Outstanding first half by Tom M. Stutz Rockets. Bruce Gradkowski, nearly perfect. He one pass that he doesn't complete. What, what is wrong with him? I mean, this guy's been outstanding. You know, the ability we said in the glass ball to be at 80 plus percent, and today has just been outstanding. He commands the offense. These guys play for him, and Lance Moore. Great on film, but great in person as well. Northern Illinois took the opening kickoff and moved systematically very quickly down the field, scored a touchdown, but since then Toledo has scored 28 and unanswered points. From the Huskies' point of view, what went wrong in the first half? I think those that fourth down when they went for the punt, you know, the fake punt, and then went for it again and did not make it, that hurt them because it seemed like to deflate their defense as well as their offense, and their defense has been on the field way too long. With them being banged up, they got to get Michael Turner the ball, but they got to get it down the field and try to score some points. All right, so they'll start the third quarter down 21. This is not the only game going on in the Mid-American Conference this afternoon. Let's check our Office Max Mac scoreboard. A couple of games already in the books. Akron defeated Ohio. We'll see the Bobcats next week as they host Miami on the Mac game of the weekend. Break up Eastern Michigan. Al LeVan, the interim coach of the Eagles, two for two. Consider this. Ball State beat this Toledo yeah. team we're seeing this afternoon. Today in Ypsilanti, EMU dominated the Cardinals. Al LeVan said his team was going to be better. They were going to compete the rest of the season. And you talk about wars and grudge matches uh -oh. in the MAC. It doesn't get any better than Western and Central. It's been a difficult season for both of those teams. And right now in the third quarter, the Broncos of Gary Darnell lead Central Michigan 24-14 still to come tonight Bowling Green's got to keep it rolling they've got to win over Kent State that's a 6:30 kickoff Sharon Thorsland has our halftime report when we return to the glass bowl in just a moment we're at the break Toledo 28 Northern Illinois 7 it's not just a game it's an event do you think I do this for my health I work like a dog. It's rough. It's off the season this week. Brad Hoy has a preview. 2002 2003 was a season of firsts for NIU basketball. During the inaugural campaign at the new Convocation Center, the Husky men posted their first winning season since their return to the MAC finishing in second place in the league's West Division. This season, Coach Rob Judson's Huskies are back for seconds with a goal of finishing first. We have a, a team that uh, already has the respect of others in the league. We still feel like we are targeting the other teams in our league because uh, we're still a team that's on the rise and we're excited about our opportunities for this new season. Judson has two big time players in seniors Marcus Smallwood and P.J. Smith. Smallwood is the league's lone returning first team all max selection and one of just 20 players in Division I to average a point rebound double-double last season. Each of us like individually just have to step up and do things better than we did last year at the depth we have at the post position. We have that at every position this year and that's really going to help us you know deep in the march because if we have a person in foul trouble or you know somebody's hurt that night then we have somebody else who can come out and step up and fill that role. And perhaps the most vital role will be played by the versatile Smith. The Huskies' leading scorer is also their top defender. I just look at it as a way of uh, defense creates uh, offense for me and also for the team. And defense wins championships. So, I mean, you can't just be one-sided and have one element to your game. So you got to play both sides. So that's what I try to, try to concentrate on, try to work hard on and practice in the game. The Northern Illinois women are equally as excited about the upcoming season. Last year, illness and injuries decimated Coach Carol Hammerley's team. But this season, the Huskies are healthy again and hungrier than ever to vie for a Mid-American Conference West Division title. 
one of our main goals from when we started as freshmen was to be the West Division champs, and I think that's what we're going to try and focus on. We had a lot of injuries before, and now we don't, and it's it's a lot easier in practice, you know, when you have five post players instead of three. And I mean, you're excited at the beginning of every season, so it, it, this season's just as good as any others. We have a lot of lot of players returning. We've got some really solid leadership. And um, I, I think this group is going to be quite capable. And you know, in the MAC, I tell you, um, there is no bottom team in the MAC. So I think anything can happen. I can't wait to, to throw the ball up in the air and see what happens. It's an exciting season of MAC basketball coming up. We've got some exciting first half highlights coming up from you. It's Toledo over Northern Illinois, 28 to 7. It's go time. The beasts of the East meet the best of the West for one final showdown in the MAC football championship game. Don't miss any of the hard hitting, high flying, head turning, helmet crashing action. Be a part of the MAC football championship experience. Log on to MAC sports.com for more information. The MAC football championship game. It's time to represent. Fishermen of the North Shore, I come with news. The time to see the Cavaliers is now. I repeat, the time is now. Do not be slow. There are still seats. And hey, look, that's a dead fish. Thank you. Motor City Bowl 2003. We have the teams representing the two conferences that dominate Midwest college football. We have the united backing of the world's most important manufacturing industry. We have a national television audience. We have the newest, best football stadium in America. Motor City Bowl 2003. Football in Detroit. During the holidays, you want to be here. The critics have spoken. Back football is a must-see. Sunday with NASCAR this morning. Get the inside track from the pre-race show that'll have your motor running before the green flag drops. With interviews and in-depth analysis, shift your race days into high gear. NASCAR this morning on Fox Sports Net. Extreme sports all in one place. Weekdays on Fox Sports Net. Today's presentation of the Mid American Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by First Energy. Our energy is working for you. By Huntington Banking Investments Insurance. GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. And by the Cleveland Clinic. By Office Max, you supply the ambition, will supply everything else. MBNA, the official credit card of the Mac. By Kraft Foods. And by Giant Eagle. Make every day taste better. Set to begin the second half. Tom Amstutz and the Toledo Rockets lead Northern Illinois 28 to 7. Northern Illinois won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so Bruce Gradkowski will have to wait just a little bit longer before he gets back out onto the field. Northern Illinois, obviously, this is a big possession trying to get back into this game. Charles Arbuckle down 28 to 7. Smart move by them of not getting the ball earlier. They really need to do something on offense, a long, sustained drive, get their defense a chance to rest, and come back strong against Gradkowski. Touchback. And Bruce Gradkowski had just an amazing first half. And his numbers brought to us by the Cleveland Clinic. 16 of 17 
94.1%. Unbelievable in the first half alone. And he is just feeling. I mean, it's like we're watching scale drill, seven on seven, where you have no linemen. It's no one there to bother him, and he's able to get the ball down the field effectively. Look at those long drives. Unbelievable. The last four possessions ended in touchdowns for Toledo. First and ten for Northern Illinois from the 20-yard line as we begin the second half. Here's Michael Turner. And Turner will burrow his way down to the 24-yard line. A gain of four on first down, second down, and six. Turner now, 14 carries, 53 yards. Well, they do a very good job here, Keon Jackson, of stopping. You know, Keon Jackson is a rover slash cornerback. He has to stay outside and force contain. And if he does that, Michael Turner has no time to run it outside. He has to cut it back in. And when he cuts back up, there are defenders there to catch him. Well, Northern Illinois with a touchdown on this drive could get back into this game. Right now they trail 28 to 7. Here comes Turner the other way, bounces outside. And look at all the blue jerseys around the burner, Michael Turner. And that's a great look at what defensive players are taught to do. You know, if a guy fakes, you work with him. If he, if he moves, you dip with him. If, he, if you dip, I dip. If you dance, I dance. If I move, you move. They're doing everything. Look at all those guys. They're doing they're, Look at it. They're in unison. It looks like swans on the lake. Boom, boom. They're moving around. Great job. But you have to stay in front of them. Keep your shoulders square and then come up and attack. Good job, defense. Northern Illinois, three of eight on third down conversions. Now facing third and five. After taking the second half kickoff, Paldy the pass to Hurd. He's got it, and it's a first down for Northern Illinois. Huge first down for Northern. After Michael Turner had been bottled up two plays in a row, Sam Hurd, who's been kind of the quiet guy this year, they come back and they're able to complete that. Need more to go to him because you know Fleck is gaining a lot of attention. And Fleck works up. Keon Jackson works back. Hurd comes underneath. That's why he's open. Hurd, the sophomore from San Antonio, his second catch of the game. A fresh set of downs. Here's Haldy on the rollout. Pump fake. Going to keep it across the 35. Hit hard as he reaches the 37-yard line. That's a gain of five. Very good decision and also a very good job of protecting the football in traffic. You know, Haldy made a bad decision earlier in the game, and I'm sure at halftime, Matt Canada and the other coaches told him, this is what you do. Tuck it down now. Put it away. You know you're going to get hit. That's what Toledo's done. They've been physical to everybody that gets in that secondary. Anytime somebody has the ball, you see three, four, or five people hitting them. And Brock Dodger led the way for Toledo. Here comes a corner blitz. Haldy picks it up down the field. Incomplete. Tried to get it to Perry at the, the, the Toledo 35-yard line. And you can see Anthony Jordan signaling incomplete pass. They were trying to pick on Anthony Jordan. That has happened to him before in that fake. They want to go on that seam route, and that's good coverage by Jordan. Normally, the linebacker, you create space. Keith Perry can't quite run the day like he wants to, and Jordan is able to stay with him because he's a little bit nicked up. Didn't even know if he was going to play. Game time decision, but Anthony Jordan just keeps pressing and stays underneath the throw. Charles, that was a good point about Keith Perry and the footing. He slipped on that very last step as he tried to come back for the football. Third down and four. Paulie trying to pick up his second consecutive third down conversion. Incomplete. Keon Jackson was there, and there is a flag down. Also, Paul Dye may have been whistled. And that came way from the far sideline. They're going to call it against uh, Toledo, and that's the call you hate if you're a coach because you have one guy calling it way on the other side for the official that's on this sideline, the line judge over here, where he can clearly see everything taking place. Defense. Spot ball. Now, you see the coverage there. It doesn't look like any pass interference there. Paul, Paul Dye just does a good job of making the play. But this guy here is going to make the call over here. You see, that's about 20 yards, and that's not a good call. Aldi was trying to get the football to Chatone Powers, who had two touchdown grabs last week at Buffalo. Quiet today, still without a catch. Here's Turner, straight up the middle, breaks one tackle, into the clear, 40. Play for Northern Illinois, finally bumped out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Northern Illinois first Antoine Malone tried to knock the ball away and almost knocked himself out, and Bernard Turner is still running. 
This was a great job of working inside. Talking about that blocking, but also with Turner with those shoulder squares. Now watch at the end. Antoine Malone's going to come over and try to knock the ball out. He can't even get his arms around Turner. This is great blocking. Look at that. Locking people up. And then Turner's going to work there and then get that hole. Ooh, I like it. Because look at the shoulders. He's hitting linebackers when their angles are all screwed up. And then you got Antoine Malone. Watch this. He's not going to be able to get his arms around Turner's shoulders. But he hustled. That's great hustle by Antoine Malone. Well, that 50-yard gain by Michael Turner put him over 100 yards on the day. It's first and goal at the nine-yard line. Hey, Mac fans, go along with the MBNA Mac MasterCard. Call toll-free 1-866-GET-MBNA now to apply for a Mac MasterCard and get a Mac Spectator chair free with your first qualifying transaction of at least $25. Call now toll-free 1-866-GET-MBNA to be sure to mention the priority code QJQ4. QJ. Q4. Dave, that's just how quick this guy Turner can turn the game around. And that pass interference call that wasn't really or was very questionable kept this drive alive. It Time now to check the highlights of our first half of action. It was a half dominated by Toledo, but Northern Illinois started quickly. Keith Perry on the receiving end of that touchdown pass. They want to go to Keith Perry. You see the feet of Aston Martin. The feet guide him to the end zone for six. And Trinity Dawson also had a touchdown run in the first half. Strong. He's stronger, but he's also got speed. Gradkowski with a pair of scoring strikes. There's the first to Lance Moore. And then Andrew Clark from five yards out. First and goal for Northern Illinois at the nine. Three wide receivers, trips to the right. Long count by Haldy. Haldy now running left inside the 10. He'll take it down to the seven. Broken play. Play. It was a busted play. A.J. Harris is in the game. And it looked like Haldy wanted him to come back on this side. A.J. Harris works to the left instead of the right. That's yes. so frustrating coming after a timeout. Well, he's expecting him to go there. And you see the line, it looks like they're all blocking unless Haldy made the mistake, but there's no blocking out in front on that side. The other thing about this, will this hurt their average? They're at 100% scoring in the red zone. Amazing. 67.5% touchdown scoring ratio as well. Here's Haldy, the throwback. To the six-yard line goes the tight end, Brad Seaslack. That play took a long time to develop. I mean, it it, it never looked good. <laughs> it looked, you know, it looked funny from the start and got ugly, uh, uglier as it went on along. Frank Ophelia you can't get him out of the line if he's playing with a broken hand. Well, that was just good. You know what made that ugly was guys like Franco Feely getting over. I mean, that's a great job by a defensive lineman getting stuck in the middle and working all the way back over to the field. Normally you talk about sideline to sideline guys, they're linebackers, but that's what these defensive linemen can do. Third down and goal from the six. Haldy finally throws out of bounds. That was a smart play by Haldy. He did not want to take a sack in that situation, but now it's fourth down. And you trail 28-7. Great job by the, the, the defensive line for Toledo, but also the secondary. When you have good coverage, it means normally that you're going to have good pressure. That's great job. That's a great job by Chaz Williams, the captain, getting over and enforcing the loss. This will be a 24-yard field goal attempt from the left hash. Steve Azar, just named last week as a Groza semifinalist, he's the reigning MAC Special Teamer of the Week. And he shoots it through Dave, his 70th field goal of his career. That was a bad snap. P.J. Fleck reached back, and I'm surprised he was able to get it down. Northern Illinois gets points on the board on their first drive of the third quarter. But Toledo still leads by 18. Can I get this presentation printed and bound? There's a special place in Office Max to print and copy and buy. Copy Max. Digital printing centers. Copy Max. For labels, forms, and papers inside Office Max is where you get your supplies. There's a place called Copy Max for color copies, banners, printing, shipping, folding, binding, faxing, all your printing needs. Max means more. As clear.
Cleveland's number one sports health provider, Cleveland Clinic Sports Health is on a first name basis with some of Cleveland's most promising athletes. Cleveland Clinic. So the Huskies of Northern Illinois sees his team take the third quarter kickoff. They drive the length of the field. They settle for a 23-yard field goal, but they do have points on the board. It's 28 to 10, 10:58 to go, and we've got more exciting MAC football action for you next week. Big Ben, Ben Roethlisberger, and the reigning brand new champs of the MAC East Division. Head on down to the edge of the Hocking River to take on their arch rivals, the Ohio Bobcats. Should be an outstanding game. Miami at Ohio next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern time kickoff on many of these of these same stations. On the run from the nine yard line, across the 20, loose ball, ball's loose on the ground. Huskies have it back. <laughs> we talked about it at the break. They needed a big play on special teams or defense, and this is what the Huskies are known for. Blocking punts, doing things at the opportune times, and this is a great play on special teams. So the fumbled kickoff recovered by the Huskies, and they're back in business. You want Lance Moore to be the guy that takes the ball back. Rodney Gamby is now recovering, I mean, running it back, and he's hit. Ball comes out. Sometimes you're not used to running down there on a kickoff return. He's the up guy normally the block. The ball comes out as soon as he's hit. You're going to see him get hit right there. The ball come right out. Good play by 35 there of Northern Illinois. Dustin Hutchick. Hutchick put his hat right on the ball. And that was Chiching for Hutchick. <laughs> First and 10 now for Northern Illinois. And here comes Turner. Turner, when he puts his head down, it's almost as if, Charles, he's running downhill. He takes it down to the 17-yard line for a gain of nearly five. It looks like the battle ram. The other thing about Turner that makes him so tough to bring down, look at the size of his legs. I mean, those big thighs, tacklers just bounce off those things. Not only that, the calves, too. I mean, that's that's where all your power is. Now, down below is where he carries most of his 230 pounds. Call it second down and a short six. The fake to Turner. The pass to the end zone. Touchdown, Keith Perry. That is a mismatch for this defense. That is what they want to do. They want to put you in a disadvantage. Dodrell and Jordan can't cover Perry. Perry's a wide receiver who's now a tight end. And he's been a little bit banged up. But I asked Matt Canada, how many times are you going to go to him in this red zone area? He just smiled because he knew this was a matchup that you want. Great job. Great individual effort. Guy that didn't even didn't even think he was going to play two touchdowns today. That makes the score 28-16. And Keith Perry now with two touchdown catches, a 25-yarder on the game's first possession by the Huskies, and now an 18-yard score. Dave, what about a team that has been through so much adversity over the long haul? Even though these guys went all around, they understand the tradition of being a losing program and how to win. Oh, no question. No question. Uh, Charles, the strategy here on the two-point conversion as Northern Illinois burns a timeout. Both teams now have burned timeouts in the early goings here in the third quarter. It's 28-16. What are your thoughts on going for two in this situation? They get to 10. Doesn't really hurt them. I mean, if they don't get it, it's still a 12-point ball game. They get it here, that puts them in a situation where they need a touchdown and a field goal because you don't know. I mean, maybe they can hold Toledo and start forcing a slow chipping away at that score. 10 is always better than 2. I mean, 10 is always better than 12, excuse me. You know, Charles, uh, to get back to your point about turning around the tradition of a losing program, you know, that's something that the guys on this team, that's ancient history to them. They, they're, they weren't involved with that. Take a look at some of these numbers. Northern Illinois has won 16 of their last 18 games, 21 of their last 27, 16 of their last 19 league games, 23 of 16 at home, and seven of their last 10 on the road. So this is a program that is develop, developing a winning tradition. But they have to know the history. Even though they weren't around, they understand from the guys that were there like the hammocks of the world or the Justin McCarrens or the Ryan Deans who went through that adversity and now they're back. Toledo on the other hand has been the top dog in the West for such a long time. So here comes the Huskies going for two, three wide receivers, two to the right. 
now we've got movement in the line, and it apparently looks like it'll be against Northern Illinois. Matt Rogers. The young guy was ready to go, and that hurts you. Now you have to go for the... Right this way. Ball start. Offense. PAT after that. You got to sit and stay. You got to stay there. That's one of the hardest things for those offensive linemen. So Steve Azar will come on to add the extra point as the, the penalty will change the strategy. Going for his career point after 147 right here, and it will come from the 15 yard line. Shoots it right through. Twenty-eight seventeen. After tailing twenty-eight seven at the half, Northern Illinois has come back to put a quick ten on the board. We're back to Toledo in a moment. Thanks, Mom. My kids play hard. That's why they love Capri Sun Sport. It helps rehydrate to keep them going. So after this, they can carry their own stuff. Capri Sun Sport. It's liquid fuel. Isn't it nice how we all bring a little something different to the table? Crystal Light, 14 refreshing flavors, just five calories. Enjoy life one sip at a time. Share the holiday tradition. Make the season special. Enjoy a magic moment. It's Berwyn for the holidays. Celebrate the season. Jack's your one-stop shop. At Jax, we're sales with all the top brands for pros and the do-it-yourself. At Jax, we're service with factory-trained reps for professional repairs. And of course, we're Chicagoland's best equipped rental store. Rent it, buy it, get it fixed. We've got it all at Jax. Thanksgiving is just around the corner and you have family coming. After the big meal, what are you going to do? Take them to an experience that they'll talk about the rest of their lives. Disney's The Lion King. Your family will love it and you'll help the Volunteers of America of Illinois to provide for children in need. Best seats are available right now for Friday, November 28th by calling 312-707-9772. One special night of Disney's The Lion King. A benefit for Volunteers of America of Illinois. Presented by Comcast Cable and ABC Radio Chicago. Tuesday at 7.30 on Fox Sports Net. 10.13 to go third quarter. Toledo still with a lead, but Northern Illinois with a quick 10 on the board to get back in this thing. They trail by 11. Let's head down to Sharon Thorsland. And Sharon, Northern Illinois had no intention of giving up, especially in the wake of last year's game. Certainly not. The Huskies have been waiting for this game for a year now after last year's 41 seconds left on the clock when they lost last year's game to Toledo. They're using that as motivation. All summer long, they ran 41 second drills at the end of practice. The Toledo train, I mean, the um, NIU trainer would go out in the middle of the field in a Toledo jersey, make the players chase them around for 41 seconds. And the point of this was to motivate them to show them hey we were 41 seconds short of playing for a MAC championship their goal is to win the MAC they fell short of that they know this year they have to go through Toledo again and they have no intentions of giving up they're gonna fight hard to try and win this one all right Sharon thanks just a little bit of an indication Charles of how intense the Huskies are even though they were down big at halftime they had there was no intention of quitting they've lost way worse so they know they can come back from margins of, like this from the 10 to the 20, Odom trying to get outside. And you got to watch it when Steve Azar, the kicker, makes the tackle. He made a good tackle, though. Yeah, good form. Yeah, it was very good form. Yeah, I mean, he looks like he can play a little ball there. He's going to come down. Let's see if he sheds off any blocks. Oh, he works and works. and Oh, oh boom. Look at him. Put the shoulder down and wraps up and picks him up. <laughs> oh, man. All smiles. He saw himself on the big screen. Guys are going to love that film on, on, on tomorrow or Monday. They're going to love that one. All right, first and 10 now for Toledo as they try to bounce back after this quick start to the third quarter. Here's the pass to Clark by Radkowski, and he takes it out to the 36-yard line. They, they do such a very good job of play faking, and that's the first thing I asked Rob Spence. Who does he watch? Who does Gradkowski look at? He said, well, we also game plan ourselves. He watches a lot of film on himself, but he looks at Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, and I asked him about Boomer Esiason. All those guys do a very good job of just selling the fake. And 
Northern Illinois trying to get back into the total yards battle with a big edge here early in the third quarter. Second down and six. Gratkowski under center, and there's the handoff to Trinity Dawson. And Dawson will go across the 40, up to the 41. That ball's loose. Loose ball. Dawson fumbled the ball, and Northern Illinois got it. Wow. Northern Illinois came into the game plus 12, and this is the reason why. They get after the football. You got to hold on to it. Lionel Hickenbottom. Hickenbottom. Lionel Hickenbottom comes up with the recovery. I was just getting ready to say, Chris Holmes has a great block. The ball is loose, though. You see the ball being carried out. And Randy Drew, once again, the cornerback who's normally just a cover guy, comes in. Gretkowski has a chance at it. Faison has a chance at it. But Lionel Hickenbottom comes up with it. So two uncharacteristic turnovers by Tom Amstutz, Toledo Rockets. And Northern Illinois can get a little closer with a conversion on this drive that will begin at the Toledo 40. Here comes Turner. Turner to the 35, trying to get wide. How about that stiff uh -oh. arm? First down and more. Finally knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Gain of 18. How did he get outside of the contain? Keon Jackson is not a slow guy. 5'11", 206, who can run. He outran the contain. I mean, he works inside, and then when he's going to get here, Keon Jackson clearly has to stop right there. He gets around it. Look at him. They're holding hands. That's how fast he is. Look, he grabs his gun, takes his gloves off. Oh, my goodness. He took the corner, and he took Keon Jackson's glove. Three wide receivers now on first and 10 from the 22. Paldy, and it's more Turner. And he's got a huge gaping hole up the middle. Across the 15, down near the 13-yard line, and another Husky first down. That's great blocking right there. They're just doing a great job. Todd Galani, the center. Watch the center. Watch him just move this guy over. Stop it right there. He sees the hold, and he cuts back and works up the field. They got that double team block going, and they work up, scraping those two guys working together. Jake Eakum, even hot, and Jake for straight. 68 and 66, working, working, working with Todd Delaney. Give him a gain of nine. Second down and less than a yard from the Toledo 13. Here comes Turner. Picks his way. First down. Moore takes it down to the seven. That's a gain of six. It's first and goal for Northern Illinois. What an amazing turnaround here in the third quarter. And you hear pads popping now, guys. Michael Turner is starting to get in the groove in this line. Look at them. They're just doing a great job of locking on people. And, you know, they do, you know, what's interesting about Northern's line is that those big guys do a very good job of blocking on air, meaning if guys are running away from them, they'll go look them up and chase them until they get them. That was Turner's number of carries increases. He has a tendency to wear down the defense. That may be happening here. First and goal, Haldy, pass knocked down. And that will be ruled as an incomplete pass. The defense, the Fort Toledo, uh, they thought that ball may have been a lateral, but that will be ruled as an incomplete pass. Keon Jackson is upset. He's the one that got that tip. He said, I was being held. He reached up and knocked that ball down. Yeah, you can hear him. <laughs> You can hear way up here. Was that a lateral? <laughs> Goes as an incomplete pass. Nose of the football just inside the Toledo eight. Second down and goal. Flex in a slot on the right. Baldy looking to the right, going to the right. End zone. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. P.J. Fleck. A great job by P.J. Fleck. And you know what happened? The defensive back never turned around. P.J. Fleck pushed off just a little bit, but they don't call it because the defensive back never turns around to look inside. If he just looks up, they may get a penalty call. P.J. Flex, see, they're working the work. Then he finally turns around. They fight each other off, and when Malone does that, he loses where he is. And Haldy, that's a great throw. It's going right to the back pylon where it's supposed to go on the corner route. Six points. Azar with a point after, up and good, 28-24. Northern Illinois has scored 17 unanswered points here in the third quarter and now trail by only four, 28-24. I promise you good service when you come into the bank every time. I promise that you're going to be a happy customer when you're banking at Huntington. Those are the little things that I think. 
Toledo leads Northern Illinois, but the 21st ranked Huskies have scored 17 unanswered points in the first seven minutes of the third quarter to get back into this game. Josh Holdy, three touchdown passes today, and you can see how much more efficient and successful the Huskies have been in the second half. Yeah, they, they have really gotten their momentum back, but also Toledo is actually just giving them an opportunity. They have to capitalize and control the, the, the game the way they had earlier in the half. Azar with the kick, and it's Lance Moore from his own four-yard line trying to get outside, use some of that speed. He breaks it out across the 40. And that's where Toledo will start, first and 10 from their own 40-yard line. And once again, Moore only needed a couple more strides to get to the corner. Steve Azar made that tackle the last time. He came up, and he didn't have a guy he was hitting the last time. This was Lance Moore, and Lance Moore blew through that hole. Well, obviously, this is now a big series for Toledo. Uncharacteristic two fumbles this afternoon after only four total fumbles in their first nine games. Ball security for them is great. They don't they don't beat themselves. That's why they were plus nine coming into today's ball game. Bruce Gradkowski has played virtually a perfect game for the Rockets, but now midway in the third quarter, Toledo leads by only four, 28-24. Gadkowski's going to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Here's Dawson. And Dawson shoots through to the 45. So that's a good surge up front by that Rocket offensive line. And Trinity Dawson picks up five yards. And that was a great call by Bruce Gadkowski of changing the play. And when he does that, number 51, David Odenthal, the center also has to make adjustments. So the center has as much to do as the quarterback when they make audible calls. See him right there. He's pointing out. He's saying 22, Jason Hawkins. He may be the guy coming. We got to get him on blitz pickup. Gradkowski in the play action fake on second and five. Going to send it long for Moore. And Moore has two Huskies running stride for stride with him. And the pass was too long for anyone to catch up with. Well, it hurts his completion percentage also. <laughs> He's been going so well. I mean, he just really commanded this offense great. But what they have to do is that's the kind of play you want to go for the deep. You still got a manageable first down yardage pickup that you can go here on third and five. Third down and five. Big play for Toledo here as they want to stop the Northern Illinois momentum. from the gun on third and five. Across the middle, pass is caught, complete. First down, and more, down to the 36-yard line, and the reception by Chris Charlton. So Charlton makes his second catch of the game. That's a good play call, because on third and five, all you need is a six-yard route, and there's not gonna be any defense there. Gradkowski just sits in there, he looks at Andrew Clark. That creates space right in that hole, and you can see Clark had the hook, Charlton has the hook up, and also Lance Moore on the outside. Good job of getting that first down. So Toledo now after the first down conversion. First and 10 from the Northern 37. Deep handoff. That's Dawson. Pick and bottom. Grabbed hold of him and waited for his teammates to arrive, but not before he takes it down to the 30-yard line. So that's a gain of seven on first down for Trinity Dawson. They're trying to get this ball away from him. <laughs> and you can see outside their work. He works inside. Look at Lionel Hickenbacker right there, bottom. He goes for the football. Look, he's, he's trying to tackle the ball instead of him. And then Randy Drew comes over as well. Good job by Trinity Dawson of holding on to the football. Clock continuing to run, closing in on six minutes in the third. Three wide. Setting up the screen to Dawson. And a flag. It's going to be a holding call against Toledo as Dawson takes it down inside the 20-yard line. Brought down at the 17, but this one will come back. And see, that play takes a lot longer to develop, and your linemen start getting kind of worried. You know, center there is going to be accused of the holding. 51, David Old Oldenthal. But what happens is they have a clock in their head that they're thinking, okay, how long do I sit here? How long before I go out to block? And it took so long for that play to develop.
You know, that's the biggest thing with offensive linemen. They don't want to go downfield and be an eligible man downfield, but also they want to get the block. On the offense, behind the line of scrimmage, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. You know, so that clock is clicking in his head, and that's 51 right there. He's going to work outside. Gradkowski runs way over to the other hash, and by the time he throws the ball, that's where the holding is going to occur right there. Dawson has some room, but see how long that play took to develop. By the time it was there, the defensive guy was able to work inside. Odenthal was not in position to get his block. Odenthal from Cologne, Germany, the first player from Germany to play for the Toledo Rockets. He was coached in Germany by former Toledo assistant Kirk Heidelberg. In fact, uh, Tom Amstutz told us yesterday he thinks he's got another player from Germany coming for next season. Another holding penalty that's coming up against Toledo as Gradkowski goes out of bounds. So Eric Faison is, is the guy that's going to be accused here. They're trying to get outside, and when you get beat, you know, for linemen, when they're not in position, they can't readjust. See, that was a great move inside, and then he's got him beat right there. He's holding Vincent Reynolds with that inside move, and the official is right behind. You saw the flag coming in. Offense, behind the line of scrimmage, 10 yards from the previous spot, still second down. Being out of position on defense, you normally miss tackles. Being out of position as an offensive lineman, you're generally going to get holding calls. So two big penalties have knocked this Toledo drive off the tracks. And this is what they've done this whole second half. They have not helped themselves by getting positive plays. They've had more negative plays in this half than they probably had in their last two ball games with the Sands, the Ball State game. So it's now second down and 23. And the nose of the football is at midfield. Toledo will go with four wide receivers this time. Gradkowski looks one way. Now just gets the pass away, and it's another loss. The beast, Brian Atkinson. Comes up with the tackle back at the 45, so it's a loss of five more yards. There is not a whole lot of plays in the playbook that are third that can go on second and 30, and generally not any plays for third and 35. But you can see great job getting inside pressure. Both 90, Martin Wilson and Leonard Cooksey, the two defensive tackles. So Ryan Atkinson just sits back. He sees the play coming, gets him in his sight, wraps up, makes the tackle. Now, I don't think they have a play that's a third and 35 play, which I think they'll nope. do is just run the draw and punt the ball. It's about third and halfway to Mommy, third and 28. Toledo leads the Northern Illinois 27 for the first down. Another penalty. Third down. I talked a minute of that because I thought it was about third and 35. I just looked at that last loss, so maybe it is third and 33. It's close. <laughs> this is just not the way Toledo football is played. They're self-destructing at home, which is very unusual. So on third and 33 from their own 40-yard line. Kowski across the middle. Pass is caught. It's clear. And he's gone for a Toledo touchdown. 60 yards. Clark with his second TD grab. I guess they do have a third and 33 play. <laughs> Toledo had the Husky defense right where they wanted him. You cannot give up a touchdown like this. Not when you know it's coming. Tight end's going to be there. He's just going to work up the seam. He's not the linebackers don't get him, and the safety gets sucked in. You cannot have that on a third and 33. What a backbreaker for Northern Illinois. Kick is up, and the kick bounces in off the side pocket. Robbins bangs it in off the left upright for the point after it's 35-24. I told you Andrew Clark was going to go home and talk about him. 
And this is how you do it. You catch a long touchdown pass on third and 33. Tell the coach, put this in the playbook, man, because I will go to the house. And that's a terrible job by Lionel Hickenbottom because he's the safety. He has to stay deep. He's the free safety. He's going to come in right here. And you're going to see he just run right by him. He's working outside, worried so much about Moore and the guys on the outside. Lionel Hickenbottom has to have coverage back on that hash. Boy, Andrew Clark showed some speed there. He's having a huge game. Four catches, two touchdowns. He came into play today with five touchdown catches. If the scouts aren't looking at him, they will be now because he not not only he has great size, that, that showed great speed. Lionel Hickenbottom did not make up the cushion. Toledo converts a third and 33 from their own 40 for a 60-yard touchdown. I asked Chris Head, the tight ends coach, because I was watching film in his office. Where are you going to throw to the tight end? I guess you are. <laughs> Kick off into the end zone. And Randy Drew will stay in there. So Northern Illinois will have the football at their own 20-yard line. Northern Illinois scored 17 unanswered points to begin the third quarter thanks in large part to a pair of turnovers by Toledo and they were seemingly one snap away from getting the ball back with an opportunity to take the lead for the first time since the first quarter but Toledo rolls a big six on third and 33 Andrew Clark on the receiving end of a 60 yard touchdown pass from Bruce Gradkowski. Let's say this Lionel Hickenbacker has, bottom has played a good game but right there that was busted coverage. Michael Turner across the 20 and up to the 24 yard line for a gain of four. Now Michael Turner and this this Northern Illinois offense is just similar to Novocaine. You know when you have to go under for surgery, you always say, "I'm not going to go out in 10, 9, you sleep." That's how this offense is. They don't change anything. They want to run to the short side of the field sometimes. And you can see if he gets past that second or third guy, there's no one there, and he would still be running. You can see the fog starting to roll in now as we get deeper into the second half. Turner again and he is wrapped up in the backfield Franco Feely he's playing with that hand bandaged up bandaged up there you go right there broke it in the ball state game and now he's back and this is what he brings to this defense great hustle look at this man that's close to speed that is a great job by Franco Feely getting over and making the tackle on Michael Turner Northern Illinois made some key third down conversions early in the second half, and they're facing another one now. Third and seven, late in the third. Great protection for Haldy, and the pass is caught. Fleck has it, goes out of bounds. First down, up at the 32-yard line. Great pass, but who are you going to call? P.J. Fleck. If you need a first down, P.J. Fleck. When you need a big return or anything else, P.J. Fleck. <laughs> this guy just keeps doing it. Wasn't supposed to be at, at a major university. Wasn't recruited, you know, and that's the kind of guys that Northern likes. They like guys that don't quit, that just keep on coming after you. First and 10 from the 32. Here's Turner, slips one tackle. And just powers his way down across the 40 near the 41 yard line for a nine yard gain. And that's kind of what lulls you into that false sense of security. Oh, we got him. Well, one guy misses him. The next guy comes up. Somebody else comes up and gets hammered. He just lulls you into that sense of thinking, we got him. No, no, I don't think you do sometimes. Second in a yard. What do you think? 32 gets the ball here? I would think so. Turner. Take it outside. Alludes two tacklers. I don't think he got the first down. Spent too much time running east and west instead of north and south. He had a chance. Thought he could get outside. See, that's the thing with his speed. He, he, can, he can normally do that. But Toledo has done a very good job of just staying and trying to keep contained and not getting off their angles. Really keeping them in front of him. Paul Dye made the stop. Third in the yard. Inside of two minutes to go in the third. Northern Illinois in the national rankings this week. And 
plowing forward and picking up the first down is Josh Haldy. And you think, Charles, these two teams combined for some of the biggest wins against BCS teams by the MAC this season. Northern Illinois got it started with their overtime win over Maryland. Then they went to Tuscaloosa and they beat the Crimson Tide. They beat Iowa State. Toledo beat Pittsburgh in a, in a record-setting game. But the MAC with only two guaranteed bull bursts, that's what makes this game so important. Both of these teams desperate to win the MAC West Division. Here's Turner. Breaks a tackle. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. And I like what Joe Novak said. You know, yeah, we may not be the best, you know, top six team in the country, top ten, but we're not one of the top 56 teams in the country. <laughs> Here's a stat attack brought to us by Giant Eagle, and you can see the burner. Michael Turner has passed Chester Taylor of Toledo to move into second place among the Mac's all-time leading rushers. I don't even think Michael Turner is going to be able to catch Travis Prentice. He's got some good names up there in that, on that chart. Here's Haldy on the rollout, going to keep it into Toledo territory. Slips one tackle, gets down to the 48-yard line. It'll be third down and two. And Fleck was coming back trying to get a block for him, almost sprung Haldy outside. That's what you talk about receivers and what they do. Do they do they block well? Do they catch well? Do they you know do they do little things? Do they sell everything? And I think this this ball club does it. PJ well, Fleck included. Well, Fleck, you can see signaling. Let's go to the fourth quarter. The final seconds of the third ticking down. A wild third quarter that started with 17 unanswered points by Northern Illinois. Toledo rebounded with a 60-yard touchdown pass. Bruce Gradkowski to Clark on a third and 33. Three quarters in the books. Toledo leading Northern Illinois, 35-24. Fumbles were a big part of the third quarter story. Northern Illinois used the opportunity to get back into the game. Haldy to Keith Perry for a score. Perry with two touchdown catches. Trinity Dawson coughed up the football. And P.J. Fleck made the Rockets pay with his catch in the back of the end zone. Then on third and 33. That was a heartbreaker for the Huskies, but still 15 more minutes to go. Toledo leads by 11. Begins. Sullivan powers the Blackhawks. Smith leads the Oilers. It is on. Hawks Oilers, Tuesday at 7.30 on Fox Sports Net. Ultimate Fantasy Football Show. We know who to start, who to sit, who's a stud, and who's a dud. The hidden gems. We know what you don't. Weekends on Fox Sports Net. Creating Chicago's best pizza begins with selecting the best ingredients. The best tomatoes, vegetables, meats, and cheeses all come together to create Giordano's famous stuffed pizza, which is why we wouldn't think of serving you anything but the best. From pizzas to the freshest salads, soups, spaghettis, lasagna, chicken, parmesan, and much more. Giordano's, it's a Chicago tradition for nearly 30 years. Giordano's famous stuffed pizza. Make your party and catering reservations with Giordano's today. Where's your mom? Working late again. Going to watch TV? Okay. It's all really good on. Cool. Now you can be mom, even when you can't be there. It's like not working. Oh, that? It's working. Parental control. Another way Comcast Digital Cable makes life a little cooler. Thanksgiving is just around the corner, and you have family coming. After the big meal, what are you going to do? Take them to an experience that they'll talk about the rest of their lives. Disney's The Lion King. Your family will love it, and you'll help the Volunteers of America of Illinois to provide for children in need. Best seats are available right now for Friday, November 28th by calling 312-707-9772. One special night of Disney's The Lion King, a benefit for Volunteers of America of Illinois. Presented by Comcast Cable and ABC Radio Chicago. Fourth quarter, Toledo leads by 11, but Northern Illinois has the ball. Third and three at the Rocket 49. And now whistles stop the play. 
And the Rockets are reacting as if this is going to be a penalty against the Huskies. Right snap, ball start, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Mac fans, don't miss your chance to motor to the Motor City Bowl. Pick the two teams you think will compete for the Mac title and win. Visit your local Huntington Bank officer. Log on to MacSports.com to register. One grand prize winner will win four tickets to the Motor City Bowl and deluxe transportation aboard the WKNR Cruiser. Holdy, flushed right, throws, caught, powers with a great catch. Chateau Powers makes the grab at the 35-yard line. This is another guy that you want to get involved, Chateau Powers. Great job of him staying alive, working through, making plays. Good job. I mean, you, you wonder, he's going to come right here and get open in the middle. Chateau Powers, he's going to take a big shot. They're playing so far back, those safeties are, that it allows him to get to that intermediate range we talked about earlier. Well, obviously, Northern Illinois is thinking touchdown in this situation as Michael Turner gets down to the 32-yard line. Give him a, a gain of a couple. But Steve Azar is a weapon in this situation now, Charles. He can convert those long field goals. A field goal in this situation will cut the lead to eight. Fortunately for him, the wind is blowing that way. But when they were kicking today, the ball was not carrying as far. It was wet. And by this point, It'd be interesting to see you want to give him as much yardage if he, if he can if he can't score a touchdown. Second down and eight. Here's Turner. Trying to turn the right corner. He's inside the 30 and down to the 28-yard line. That was a huge first down pickup because they had just had a penalty to set him back. And then Chaton Powers comes across the field. He has four touchdowns on the year. Only 18 receptions coming into today's game. But you know, most of the things either happen for Michael Turner or P.J. Fleck. But you have other guys. Keith Perry has stepped up big today as well. They have weapons on offense, but they want to be able to utilize them more than they have earlier in the season. What a wild offensive game it was last year in DeKalb that Toledo rallied to win 33-30. Today, the two teams have combined for over 700 yards and nearly 60 points. Here's Haldy with a great move inside the 25-yard line. And he's got the first down. I think the wet, the wet turf slide is going to help him. <laughs> he is able to get through. Couldn't find a receiver, and he's going to see that opening, and he's going to just shake. Look at this on Dodger. Boom, I'm by you. I'm gone. And then that little slide, I think that slide gave him that first down. First and 10 now at the Toledo 22. Northern Illinois had pulled to them 28-24 before Clark pulled in that 60-yard touchdown catch for Toledo. Now the Huskies are threatening again. Here's Turner. Breaks one tackle down to the 20, but not much more. Nothing real flashy or fancy. They're just going to keep pounding with Turner. But then when they do put it in the air, want to make sure it's a, a high percentage throw for their quarterback. Joe Novak and Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator, trying to run Turner behind the big guys on the right side of the line. Jake Edenbach and Jake Verstrady. Todd Galani, the center's had an outstanding year. down and eight from the 20. Three wide receivers. It's Turner again. Turner breaks one tackle and leans forward near the 18-yard line. So here's another big key third down situation coming for Northern Illinois. And at the bottom of that pile, Keon Jackson was holding on to Turner's leg and holding on for dear life. He nope. comes up from that rover position. <laughs> Well, the Toledo Rockets should be well rested coming off their second off week of the season. Joe Novak, Northern Illinois, they beat Buffalo last week on the road. You can see Northern Illinois' third down conversion rate climbing here in the second half. Here's Holby to throw. In and out of the hands of Powers. He was open. I don't think he wanted to catch that. Thinking about getting hit before actually catching the ball. 
No, nope, that's the thing with Chaton Powers that they that he's made great plays like earlier, but right here has a chance to catch it, but he knows he's going to get hit. You might as well catch that. So Steve Azar is on to attempt the field goal. It will come from the right hash. This will be a 36 yard attempt. He missed it. Azar, a 36 yarder, didn't really seem to get a good swing at the ball, and it goes off the right crossbar. No good. Like I told you, Dave, when they were kicking in warm ups, he was not kicking very well on this turf today. Thought it was tipped, but it just never gets a good hit. Azar's field goal attempt. Just that close. We're back to Toledo in a moment. Rockets 35, Huskies 24. It's not just a game, it's an event. Do you think I do this for my health? I work like a dog. It's rough. GMAC Financial Services presents the 2003 GMAC Bowl live December 18th. Intense college football at its finest. It's not just a game, it's an event. I'm not just a butcher, I'm a meat cutter and I love certified Angus beef. I've been sharpening knives since 1963. Those hands cut a lot of meat. I'm choosy, I'm picky and I know exactly how thick an inch and a quarter is. Love cutting meat, love eating meat, love everything about it. <laughs> I know juicy, I know tender, and I love great marbling. I wouldn't give it to you if I wouldn't eat it myself. I can catch you the best steak and show you exactly how to cook it. And you can find me at Giant Eagle. Turned down again? Can't anyone help me get the loan I need to buy a car? Bad credit, divorce, bankruptcy, repossession. No problem. Even if you've been turned down before, 1-800-BUY-A-CAR can get you the loan you need in minutes. And right now, you can get a great deal on one of these great new and used cars for very little down and super low payments. I called 1-800-BUY-A-CAR and got the loan I needed and a great deal on this car. Thank you, 1-800-BUY-A-CAR. Call now. Well, Steve Azar, a bit frustrated on the Northern Illinois sideline, missed a 36-yard field goal attempt as it went off the right upright. It would have cut Toledo's lead to eight. So now with 11.25 to go in the game, the Rockets have the football, and they continue to nurse an 11-point lead. He hasn't had too many misses between uh, the 30 and the 39. First and 10 now for Toledo. And the Rockets will go to the run. It's Aston Martin. And Martin runs right into the arms of Ray Smith, the strong safety. Really didn't get rolling there on first down. I thought he was going to cut back this to this side. It looked like the hole was there, but he decided to stay on the track that he was on. Bruce Gradkowski now facing second down and nine after a gain of one by Aston Martin. Martin has a touchdown run in this game. Long count. You can see the play clock. They snap the ball at five. Radkowski with the pass to Moore. Catches it and is quickly hustled out of bounds. Randy Drew made the stop for Northern Illinois. Gradkowski so effective. That ball fake is terrific, Charles. And there you see what he's been able to do off the play action plays today. You know, you talk about a point guard being able to dribble and go between the legs, but a quarterback has to have good ball handling skills as well. And that shows up in Bruce Gradkowski's numbers. Third down and five. Gradkowski short drive. Guns the ball out to Moore. And Moore steps out of bounds. And he collects the first down up at the 32 yard line. That's a sign of a veteran receiver, Charles. You see that all the time in the NFL. Moore knew exactly how far he had to go to get the first down. He settled down right at the marker and picked it up easily. He really did. He, and he's going over to the sideline the last two plays and tell him, you know, I'm open. Give me the ball. I'll keep the chains moving. Now they're going to give a healthy dose of the runs as well. Big third down conversion for Toledo. Under 10 minutes to go now in the game. 
And Aston Martin to the 35. A gain of two, it'll be second down and eight. Well, you can see those Toledo backs wrapping up around the football. I was just getting ready to say that. Whoever's carrying the football at this point better secure it. Whether it's Trinity Dawson or Aston Martin, they have to maintain a handle on that ball. You know, he's going to get hit. When he cuts back, there's two guys waiting on him. Boom. And he holds the football with both hands. Jason Frank coming over the top. Second and seven. Three wide receivers, two to the left this time. Gretkowski shoots it out there to Moore. Moore slips one tackle, slips another. And he's buried at the 41 yard line. And a big hit by Jason Hawkins. Javan Lee is coming over the top, and he made a miss. And he knows you know, Javan Lee is right there. He spins out of that one, spins out of another one. Finally. Jason Hawkins makes the tackle. Third down now and two. Clock stopped. 9.04 to go. Obviously, Northern Illinois needs two scores, trailing by 11. So this is a big third down play for the Husky defense. Power formation this time for Toledo. And we have flags down. And did you see the run support coming up oh, at the snap of the ball? <laughs> Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five yard penalty, third down. Boy, that's a killer for Rob Spence. You can draw the plays up for third and two, but third and seven's a whole different deal. Well, not really. Not when they go for third and 33 and score a touchdown. <laughs> That's a great so, point, too. You know, I guess they have a play for every situation. And look at the numbers again for Gradkowski. 23 of 25. Combined totals in the last two games, 46 of 50. You Unbelievable. Talk, talk about a guy on five. He's a three-point shooter. <laughs> <laughs> he had six touchdown passes against Buffalo two weeks ago. Third and seven. Gretkowski rolling right, throwing on the run. It's Moore. He's got the first down. Flag, however, comes in as he's bumped out of bounds near midfield. It doesn't hurt, hurt having guys like Moore and Andrew Clark and Kenley Horton, who hadn't, hadn't had his name called much today, Chris Charlton. Oh, it's offensive pass interference. Well, it's, it's almost a pick effect. It's going to be basically a pick. You're going to see right here. He's going to they're going to call that pick right there. Work out with Moore. So Odom knocked away the defender and that cleared the way for Lance Moore. 15 penalty from the previous spot. Third down. You'd like a guy to do more of a rub where he just runs by and rubs him. But when Odom goes in and initiates contact, I didn't mention Odom as well. He's another one of those good receivers. Just gets caught there. Well, receivers get caught sometimes too. <laughs> well, if you're the Northern Illinois defense, you've got to guard against being lulled to sleep. The last time Toledo's offense started breaking down with big penalties, Toledo clicked for six. Gradkowski to Andrew Clark for a 60-yard score. Their only touchdown of the second half. Third and 21, the line of scrimmage now, the 21-yard line of the Rockets. Good protection for Gradkowski. Fires incomplete. Moore was open. Yeah, but what happened, there was better pressure that time by Northern Illinois, by Vincent Reynolds. He was able to force Gradkowski into throwing quicker than he wanted to. You know, Brad Kowski's going to work here. He's going to have Vincent Reynolds coming after him. And he's going to have to move over here and get out of the way. Now he has more open in the middle of the field, but couldn't get to him. <laughs> he, he, he was that. open. Hannum sends this one down the field. Flat back pedal. Catches it at the 36. No fair catch. Trying to get to the wide side. Got a great block. And this one's coming back. There's going to be a clip call behind Fleck on the return. 
So now Northern Illinois makes a big mistake. Even though there were a lot of points, both of these teams in the first half played much better football. The second half has been marred by not only turnovers, but penalties. So instead of having the football in Toledo territory, this penalty on the punt return by Fleck will march to the Huskies back. 8.42 to go in the game. Toledo 35, Northern Illinois 24. And you need two scores, so you need one as quick as possible. Now you have to get out of your, your, your game plan. You have to really march the ball down the field, spread out a little bit more than you want to, and you can't just keep relying on Michael Turner to run the football. You want to keep the run in, in running game in effect, but you got to get down the field. Whoa. There you go. There you go. Charles, let's see if we can pick it up. I'm going to call the hold on both teams. Can't really pick it up. I mean, you don't really see a good block right there. It must have come way on the other side. Because you can't see from that. It just looks like good blocking there. Guys holding each other up, trying to create some space for P.J. Fleck. Now we're still trying to sort this all out. We'll remind you again that the winner of this game really takes a, a giant step forward to a possible berth in the Mac West. And the Mac West winner will host the Mac Championship game on December the 4th. Miami has already won the East. We had two holds on the play. Uh -huh. We won't force the hold. That was post scrimmage kick on a receiving team, 10 yards from the end of the kick. Joe well, Novak on the left, Tom M. Stutz on your right. 8.42 to go in the game. Don't go anywhere. We're coming down the home stretch of the glass bowl. A huge game in the back west. Toledo at home, leading Northern Illinois by 11. Max means more. What does that mean? Max means more for every business bro. Max means more. Because the prices are low. Max means more of all the stuff you need. More value and more service. More low prices guaranteed. When you think ink, think Office Max for more ink and toner cartridges, all guaranteed in stock. Or we'll give you $10 off and free next day delivery of the cartridge. Only from Office Max. And that's why Max means more. Sportsnet and the new movie Master and Commander. The men would follow you anywhere. We'll take you on a journey to the far side of the world. I give you our destination. Win a trip to the Galapagos Islands. For details, go to www.masterandcommander.com. Well, then, there's not a moment to lose. Master and Commander. For the prize! Ah! Rated PG-13. Leads Northern Illinois 35 24. Northern Illinois has the football back. 8.42 to go in the fourth quarter. Hey, Mac fans, mark your calendars as the new format volleyball tournament begins Tuesday, November 18th, on campus sites before heading to Ball State November 21st through the 23rd for the quarters, semis, and championship rounds. Watch the Mac website for pairings information tonight. and 10 now for Northern Illinois at their 24 yard line. They trailed 28 seven at halftime scored 17 unanswered points in the third quarter to get back into it. It's currently 35 24. Here comes Michael Turner. Turner goes across the 25 up near the 26 yard line. Well Charles I guess uh, when you ride Michael Turner all season long you really don't want to break away from the game plan but you do need two scores in this situation. You really do and you also have to go to a no huddle situation because you can't you don't have time to huddle up you got to get quick your rhythm needs to get picked up tempo. 
Three wide receivers. Haldy from the gun this time. Haldy looking right all the way. Throwing. Intercepted. Third interception of the game. And it's Antonio Malone. His second interception. Inside the five. Goal line. Oh, he got Out it. inside the one. Wow. I thought he was in. That was a great cutback by Antonio Malone. You know, I was getting ready to say, T Toledo's used to playing an up-tempo game. Northern Illinois is not, and this is one of the ways it comes out. Josh Haldy's looking. That's a long throw. He's on one hash trying to throw way to the other hash. Antoine Malone, great catch, but good job of running the football. I thought he was in. Now, Fleck is going to work. He's working the corner route, but it's a long throw. And Malone just works his way underneath, catches the ball, and takes it back. literally on the goal line. He took a First hard hit there. The now the line of scrimmage is inside the one. Malone had an interception in the first half. Power set. And Gradkowski is going to burn a timeout here. So Toledo now with one timeout remaining. Northern Illinois has two timeouts. Hey, some teams just have your number. And right now, it looks like that is what's been the situation with Northern Illinois and Toledo. Yeah, I mean, he has been so effective all year long. And then today, throws three interceptions. You know, it's tough when you're trying to get by the, the jinx or... You know, th this ball club has talked about, well, we, you know, these guys weren't around. But sometimes history just has a way of just wearing this ugly head. Yep, no question. Uh, Toledo leads the all-time series 24-6, to and that includes 15-1, and the Rockets, which with the edge over the Huskies here at the Glass Bowl. Well, we've got more college football action out of the back coming your way next Saturday afternoon at 2.30. You could make an argument it's the most intense and history-filled rivalry in the Mid-American Conference. The Miami Redhawks head south to Athens to take on the Ohio Bobcats. Miami's already clinched the East Division, but that won't mean anything when they line up against the Bobcats. It's the Redhawks and the Bobcats from Athens, Peden Stadium, next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern, along many of these same stations. Following the timeout, Tom Amstutz has his offense back out on the field. Once again, they're in the power formation. First and goal from inside the one. And there's movement up front, and it looks like this will go against Toledo. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because you got the defensive lineman actually pointing out who it was, Tim Dirksen. Offense, false start, five yards. I mean, he's being pointed out by the defensive lineman for to, uh, Northern Illinois. You'll see that right there. Yep, he's just rocking a little bit too, too quickly. It's a great look at that line getting ready to come off being locked and loaded. A huge challenge now for Northern Illinois. They trail by 11. So a touchdown here by Toledo would be devastating. Here's Dawson into the end zone for his second score of the day. And you can hear the pads pop, and as soon as you heard that pop, great timing because Timothy Dawson got to the hole right at that moment. Good job by that line. They knew where it was coming. Northern Illinois knew where the ball was going to be run, but they couldn't stop it. Trinity Dawson made it look easy. A big, just good movement up front. Offensive lineman moving the pile, then you have a pulling guard coming around, and you just create space. Everybody just locked up. The blue jersey's on the white. So Dawson goes in for his second touchdown. And Toledo now with 41 points on the board and going for another as Jason Robbins is on to add the extra point. Toledo came into this game with a 6-3 record, 4-1 in the MAC West. Northern Illinois gunning for their first season ever with 10 regular season wins. And there's Malone, who had two interceptions, leaving the field. Robbins fires it through. It's 40 
82-24. And I would think on that return when he went down hard, something that he's holding in the hand or. Well, this is just one of many games around the Mid-American Conference. As we check our Office Max, Max scoreboard. Akron won a shootout at the Rubber Bowl with the Ohio Bobcats, 35-28. Eastern Michigan, after eight consecutive losses, has now won two in a row for interim coach Al Levan. 38-14, they beat Ball State. Western Michigan, well, they got bragging rights on the chips for at least a year as they defeat Central Michigan, 44-21. And Bowling Green and Kent State, that game will be uh, kicking off in, in just a couple of minutes. Obviously, Bowling Green needs to continue winning. In the East, Miami has already clinched by virtue of their victory at home over Marshall earlier this week. Marshall, Akron, Kent State, Central Florida, Ohio, and Buffalo round out the East. And over in the West, Northern Illinois, 5-1. and one. And You see the, the rest of the standings. Bowling Green ranked in the top 25 this week. So obviously now with the score 42-24. It looks like the battle between Toledo and Bowling Green could determine the Mac West champ. Last day game of the season, and they are ran to go against one another. Kick picked up. Across the 30, up to the 32-yard line. Jeremy Pugh on the kickoff return. 42-24. So Northern Illinois needs three scores with 7.50 to go in the fourth. And that last interception and the interception returned by Malone, just devastating. That really was because, you know, they, they had a chance to keep the ball marching down the field, have an opportunity. And I said tempo offense is not them. Paldi swings it out to Turner. Turner across the 40, up to the 44-yard line. That's a first down. So the clock will stop long enough to move the chains. You know, it's impressive. Even with this big lead, you can hear the crowd on both sides. The collective, oh, when he gets the ball, because you know something is going to happen. First and 10, Aldi from the gun. Powers has it. Gain of eight, the clock will continue to run. Northern Illinois has two timeouts remaining. Dodro was coming over to just lay the boom on Chaton Powers. He got down, caught the ball first, then was able to get out of the out of the way of a big hit. Northern Illinois quickly back up to the line, and they snap the football. That pass was intended for Powers, too wide, incomplete. Clock stops, 7-17 left. You know, Dave, on their crossing routes today, Josh Haldy has just not looked comfortable. You know, the balls that he, the, the passes that he's thrown well have been the ones going down the field, hitting Keith Perry or, you know, working on those quick hook routes. But he hadn't done a very good job down the field in the crossing routes. We're at the Glass Bowl in Toledo, Ohio. This is the MAC game of the week. Number 21, Northern Illinois, taking on the Toledo Rockets, along with Charles R. Buckle and Sharon Thorsell, and I'm Dave Weekly. Northern Illinois with a football trailing 42 24 as we close in on seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. The winner of this game keeps their hopes alive of winning the Mac West championships. Nice little play call, a little option there. They hadn't run that all game. You know, they have it in their playbook, and uh, you know it's going to go to Michael Turner. They're not going to have Josh Holdy hold it, but it sucks the defense in, and they, don't, they have a game plan for it. They've moved the football to the 36. Here's Haldy with another pass, and that one was intended for Fleck, and interference is going to be called on Toledo's Patrick Body. Body had a little too much body on P.J. Fleck. <laughs> Bodied him, didn't he? <laughs> Posted him up a little bit too early. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul, automatic, first down. With the history in the, of this ball game or the, these two teams playing, you know, you can't relax too soon. You can't give Northern Illinois an opportunity to score because the way these two teams have matched up here lately, anything can happen. That's definitely been a fast break type game. 42-24, first and 10 from the 28. Now whistles.
got to wonder what Josh Haldy is thinking. Illegal substitution on the defense. Five yard penalty. First down. Yeah, so another five yards off against Toledo and uncharacteristic Charles of, uh, of Josh Holdy today three picks yeah because he's you know not quite as proficient as Bruce Gretkowski but he's still a very good passer and throws the ball and protects the ball comes in with six on the year throws three today two to that young man that's why Malone Malone nearly scored set up a touchdown by Dawson here's Holdy setting up the screen oh what a great catch by Turner Made one man miss and goes diving inside the 20 down to the 17 yard line. And Dave, that's another thing. You know, today, or coming into today's ball game, had 14 receptions, 208 yards, three touchdowns. So he can catch the football. Watch the adjustment here. This was nice. Nice one handed catch. Look at that. Great job bringing it in. It's upended here. Another first down for Northern Illinois. Haldy going to the end zone, going into double coverage, nearly intercepted. Cedric Stevens nearly had the interception. Chaton oh, Powers. Check it, check it. That's uh, Bo Martin instead. Bo Martin on the coverage. Chaton Powers does a great job of becoming a defender. He knocks the ball out. Had he not done that, that was a sure interception. Stop the clock. 6.43 to go. Second down and 10. Now Northern Illinois has grabbed a share of the MAC West title the last two years, but didn't play in the MAC championship game or get a chance to go to a bowl because they lost the tiebreaker by virtue of head-to-head -head losses with Toledo. Haldy caught inside the five. This is Powers down to the one. That's a nice setup of a play because you have Keith Perry coming on a quick slant and Chaton Powers coming on a deeper slant. You have both of those guys working. And he's going to pick the one that's open. And what it does, the underneath one cup holds Keon Jackson down, so it creates an open, open space. Holdy on the keeper takes it down to the one yard line, but the clock will continue to run. As we were talking about here, you're going to have this guy, he's going to hold him, and then the other one come over the top. And that's what gives you the nice look. You have those two guys working over, and that's why that play is designed to hold people in space. Baldy spinning, end zone. No, did not get in. So now it's third and goal with a football less than a yard away. And Northern will burn one of their two timeouts remaining. It's here. The Mac online store is open for business. Get your favorite school gear or Mac logo apparel online from a source you trust at Mac-Sports.com. Click on online store on the left navigation bar and away you go. Credit card is required. Your holiday shopping should all be this easy. It's Mac-Sports.com. Check out the Mac online store. Dave, the other thing you talk about the bowl situation, everything is already decided before the season. It used to be you had a lot more at large bids, but now with all the conferences automatically getting bowl tie ins, it, it just kind of knocks teams like uh, Northern Illinois out. And, it, and of course, Joe Novak discussed that topic earlier this week, saying that the, he felt for sure that they were one of the better one of the best 56 teams in the country and I don't think anybody would argue with that and there will be some open slots yeah and I agree with them and you talk to Tom Amstead what about Connecticut or other teams that you know would want to come here they don't want to come here now after Pittsburgh gets beaten or you know here at the glass bowl that's exactly right third and less than a yard Turner touchdown So the burners into the end zone for the touchdown at the 551 mark. There's a lot of things that have to happen for them to get back into this ball game, but to make the score, they're gonna go for two. Try to put a make it a 10-point ball game. Onside kick. When you get into a situation, this guy has 40 
career rushing TDs. You, you never know if he could add 41 that make that score off. You know, so many things that can happen with five minutes and 52 seconds. Right? Kind of odd with so many points scored today. That was the first score for Turner. Perry's in motion. He's had two touchdown catches today. Paulie coming back the other way. Cieslik, and there is just nowhere to go. The two-point attempt is no good. That play was bad earlier, and it's still bad because you cannot run that. It takes too long. It, it was the same situation. This defense flows too quickly. You would like to see that play go on to the strong side. Cieslik is not, you know, a fleet of foot. He's a good receiver. Two-point attempt fails. But Northern Illinois draws a little closer. But do they have enough time to come back? It's 42-30 Toledo. Everybody plays at the College Football Hall of Fame. Enjoy the sights and sounds of the game. Test your skills in the training center. Encounter the heroes and the history of college football. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual spectator, there's something for everyone at the College Football Hall of Fame. Open seven days a week in South Bend, Indiana. And be sure to visit the Hall of Fame on the web. Motor City Bowl 2003. We have the teams representing the two conferences that dominate Midwest college football. We have the united backing of the world's most important manufacturing industry. We have a national television audience. We have the newest, best football stadium in America. Motor City Bowl 2003. Football in Detroit. During the holidays, you want to be here. True intensity, true heroics, true champions. A true fan reads the Chicago Sun-Times Sports. Extensive coverage from preps to the championships. Every move, every drop of sweat. The award-winning sports writers at the Sun-Times grab you, excite you, and won't let you go. Hard-hitting sports from the only team that tells it like it is. Mariotti, Talender, Slazak, the list goes on. To subscribe, call 888-84-TIMES. True sports, true Chicago. Find it only in the Chicago Sun-Times. And I've held him in check. Okay, 32 or 42 30 Toledo with the lead on Northern Illinois. Under six minutes to go in the game. The Rockets obviously want to run the clock here and get back into the locker room. Northern Illinois needs two more possessions, two more scores. Stranger things have happened, but they want to make sure they get the situation where they get the onside kick first, secure that, and put this ball game away. Well, obviously, it looks like Northern is going to go for the onside kick here. With the onside kick boot. <laughs> Who else but Lance Moore collects the football? The sure handed leading receiver of the Toledo Rockets has it at midfield. The hands team comes out. You see all the receivers and tight ends. And who comes up with it? Lance Moore. More big plays, and this is a big one. You know, get this ball. <laughs> right through the legs of Odom. <laughs> he didn't have a chance at it. And then Lance Moore comes up with it. <laughs> Well, Toledo scored touchdowns on four consecutive possessions in the first half to build a 21-point lead for Trinity Dawson. And Dawson is hammered to the ground by Javen Lee. They've done a great job of recruiting all over Toledo has. You know, getting guys like Lance Moore, who's out of Westerville, Ohio, South High School. I think Chris Wallace, one of their former quarterbacks, was from down that area, in that area. And then, you know, just going to Pittsburgh and going down to Texas and Oklahoma. It's amazing. Germany. You know, when you mentioned that earlier, that's amazing that they're going over to Germany to find a center who started for them. They found an awful lot of fine players in Canada. to the 42-yard line. And Lou West made a great point about that, that most of their 
the kids out of Canada are older of the way their school system is set. So they may be raw as players, but they're coachable because they have a, a more mature level of understanding. Yeah, and they're more physically developed by the time they get here. Yeah, you get a sense when we visited with the coordinators and Tom Amstutz yesterday, Charles, that, that, that Toledo really has this program up and running. It's more a situation of reloading rather than uh, rebuilding every year. Radkowski on the rollout, throws it to Clark. And Clark picks up the first down and is knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Clark with two touchdown catches today. And a big third down conversion right there for the Toledo Rockets. You know, when we play action pass you, as a tight end, you just love it because you know there's going to be space. You're going to find spaces in there. And Gradkowski with his eyes, he'll he'll locate Andrew Clark. They have made a nice little synergistic feel between those two, Lance Moore and Steve Odom. He has three receivers that he can find at any given moment. And that's why his completion percentage is so high. Dawson. Gotta wrap him up. Trinity Dawson still on the move inside the 20. And knocked out of bounds at the 16 yard line. You know why that's happening? Because they're tackling the ball instead of the player. You know, and, and Trinity Dawson said it in the paper this week. He said, you know, in Oklahoma, I played in a state championship, and this feels like a state championship type game. You see, they're tackling the ball and not the man. And you let the man go free, he's still running down the field. First and ten from the 16. Toledo trying to finish off Northern Illinois. Radkowski broken play. And he's going to go down. That was pretty nasty stuff. And you know, that'll go as a sack. And that'll only be the eighth sack given up by Toledo all season. And that wasn't the, the O-line's fault for sure. It wasn't the O-line's fault. It was Trinity Dawson. He's working to the left. He's supposed to come right. They wanted to sh run to the short side of the field into the boundary. And Gretkowski is like, uh-oh. <laughs> you can see the look in the helmet like, oh, my goodness. Clock continues to run. Closing it on three and a half minutes. Here's Dawson. Oh, what a great move. Boy, he accelerates through the hole and takes it down to the 10. That's the play he wanted earlier. That's what he wanted Dawson to do. You're going to see the space that's created. These guys do a great job of blocking. He's going to cut back and run up in there. You know, they create space by zone blocking and opening up holes and making these guys move over. They help each other out. There's work from one level to the next. And then Trinity Dawson has the ability to find the hole or Aston Martin or even Quentin Broussard, one of the baby backs who's been banged up that we haven't seen today. Here's Aston Martin inside the five. And knocked down at the three. He just put a pat on the feet and boom, he's gone. <laughs> you know, he comes in and just gives you a whole nother dimension. I bet you, you know, they have a, a healthy comp competitive rivalry between those two guys because you can see they, they like to push each other but they're the same class and they all you know all in the, in the same little area and they, they play well first and goal at the three Radkowski running the play clock down power set Aston Martin stopped in the backfield the ball carrier that was Ray Smith firing through to make the stop. You know, it was funny, we were talking to Tom Amstutz about what he felt would happen in this game, and there was a lot of talk that this would be a, a high-scoring game, but the old defensive co coordinator, Amstutz, was, hey, we're planning on winning this game 3 nothing." And then he looked and smiled the biggest <laughs> grin you could ever see because he knew he couldn't even keep a straight face on that one, not with these two offenses. Second and goal. Aston Martin fighting to the goal line. Inside the one. Dave, this is one of the reasons why Aston Martin is playing more. At 177 pounds, last year he would get hit and not be able to fight through. 
This year, he gets inside, and, you know, he doesn't mind talking a little trash either. I don't mind that. Not when you can run the football like that and then walk away like, yeah, I'm bad. You know, I'm about to score on you. <laughs> you know, How you about can, that? Yeah, you can say all you want. But the thing that he's improved on is, he, you know, naturally has gotten bigger as the time goes along. He and Trinity Dawson have both just are going to start developing. They're only sophomores. As is Bruce Gretkowski, excuse me. He's squeezing off every second of the play clock as we go under a minute to play. Gretkowski, touchdown. Bruce Gratkowski in for the score. A one yard touchdown run. And it seems only fitting that Gratkowski, who had such a terrific day throwing the football, rushes in for what appears to be the game's final touchdown. Quarterback sneak, you just get it in, and Bruce Gatkowski having a great game so far. Adds another touchdown. Well, nothing wrong with Toledo's offense. 49 points on the board and a 19 point lead. They just have their number. You know, they, they just have their number. Toledo has found a way to beat Northern, and Northern can't quite figure it out. You know? Time to check our Huntington Bank player of the game. It was an easy selection. Bruce Gradkowski, three touchdown passes, over 300 yards throwing the football. Oh, yeah, in a one-yard touchdown run. Bruce Gradkowski is our Huntington Bank's player of the game. And our first energy play of the game coming up, and it happened in the third quarter. After Northern Illinois had pulled to within 28-24, Toledo was facing a third and 33 from their own 40-yard line when Gradkowski found the tight end. Andrew Clark running free for a 60-yard touchdown. And that play, Charles, really broke the back of Northern Illinois. And it's our first energy play of the game. And Dave, you look at the weapons on offense, Lance Moore, junior Steve Odom, a redshirt freshman, Trinity Dawson, Ashton Martin, and Gretkowski, all sophomores, along with Andrew Clark, who's a junior. A lot of weapons coming back. Harris collects the football and takes it back to the 34-yard line. Just a few more seconds to go. And well, Charles, let me ask you, uh, this, this group, the, these Toledo Rockets, if they have to go to Bowling Green on the Friday after Thanksgiving and play for the MAC championship, what an offensive show that will be. Josh Harris and the Falcons, of course, they have to beat Toledo, beat Kent State tonight, and both these teams have to keep wanting to make that matchup happen, but it looks like it will. That'll be a great game. Here's Haldy. Sam Hurd, the catch, stays on his feet. The clock will not stop. Gain of nine. Go Antoine. Aldi to pass again. And he'll run for the first down. And he'll step out of bounds in Toledo territory. Kind of an uncharacteristic performance, and I'm sure Josh Haldy not pleased with his play today. Those three interceptions were a big part of the storyline of this one. Yeah, just never really looked comfort, comfortable today. Never got his rhythm, never really got into a, a mode of where he could get after and throw the football. You know, it was tough for him to ever get any rhythm. And, uh, it, and a lot of that had to do with Toledo's defensive line, who was much maligned coming into today's ball game, and they have really done a very good job along with that uh, other the linebacking crew and the safeties all have played great run support even though Michael Turner had 176 yards they still were able to contain Aldi with the pass to Powers and the clock is stopped with 12 seconds to go of course Northern Illinois one game left Northern Illinois are going to call their final timeout in this situation fans don't like it but the coaches oh, yeah. are going to Coach to the final snap. Northern Illinois will play Eastern Michigan next Saturday. 
in DeKalb. And for Toledo, they will host Western Michigan next week. And then we'll have a short week, a Friday morning game with Bowling Green to wrap up the regular season. Dave, you know, last, same as last year, Michael Turner had a big game rushing the football. They still lost. This year, 176 yards, which is you know, a great day by anybody's standards, and still lost the football game. So, you know, one guy can't do it all, and that's why I mentioned all of the Toledo weapons that came to play. P.J. Fleck did have a touchdown today, but really was kind of quiet today. Keith Perry had a big day today, and Sam Hurd had, had a couple of catches to Tone Powers, but not like the offense for Toledo. They had a lot of firepower going. 49 points up on the board against this Northern Illinois team that had those signature wins against BCS teams, Maryland and Alabama against Iowa State. An impressive offensive performance today by Toledo. Holdy completes the pass to Hurd. Picks up the first down. They'll move the chains and that will probably take us to the last snap of the game. Paul, he wants to take this one to the end zone, I would imagine. Cranking it up and sending it down to the end zone, and it's incomplete. And we have come to the end of the game. The Toledo Rockets. A winner over the Huskies of Northern Illinois. 49-30, Tom Amstutz and Joe Novak shake hands and now head back to the facilities building. What a performance by these two teams. Toledo gets the victory over Northern Illinois. We're back to the Glass Bowl in a moment. West of Chicago, where Husky fans are jacked for some northern exposure and a shot at the MAC title. But NIU will have to fight an uphill battle tonight. They'll play without their star tailback. It is a cold, windy evening here in DeKalb, Illinois, but the fans here at Husky Stadium will keep themselves warm with dreams of a MAC title. Tonight, it's the Toledo Rockets and the Northern Illinois Huskies playing for all the MAC marbles. Here's how it plays out. Northern Illinois, with a win tonight, clinches their first ever MAC West title. For Toledo, they need to win their next two games to win the West. In a nutshell, both teams control their own destiny. But Northern Illinois has had things spinning out of control over the last couple of days. With breaking news, here's Holly Rowe. Well, thanks, Eric. The Northern Illinois Huskies have suffered a key loss before the field even took the team. They will be without leading tailback Garrett Wolf. He has suffered an eye injury over the weekend when he was poked in the eye trying to break up an altercation. He has not been cleared to play for this game. He is at home watching. In his place, A.J. Harris will be the leading rusher tonight. He was the starter to begin the season, but went down with an ankle injury against Bowling Green, and Wolf took over. Now, this is a key loss as Wolf has rushed for 230 yards a game in their last three games. But A.J. Harris, a very capable runner in his place. Eric? Thank you, Holly. And with that, we welcome you to DeKalb, Illinois, alongside... Bob Davey, I am Eric Collins, and coach, let's get right down to it. It's a significant loss, so so close to game time. How does Northern Illinois, they have the second best scoring offense in the MAC, how do they keep things going, having to deal with this type of thing? Well, first of all, Eric, this is a blow for NIU. This guy's averaged 230 yards a game the last three games, but I know exactly what Joe Novak is doing right now on that sidelines. He's going to take a negative, try to turn it into a positive. The first thing, challenge the backup running back, A.J. Harris. The second thing, maybe more important, challenge that big offensive line. It's not always who runs the ball, Eric. A lot of times it's who blocks. Well, for the Toledo Rockets, they brought all of their Rockets offensively here to DeKalb, Illinois. They have a very unique offense, and they think, well, that they have the next great Mac quarterback in Bruce Gradkowski. 
Well, the first thing about Bruce Bradkowski, accuracy. And nobody knows that better than NIU. In last year's game, he, he opened up completing his first 14 passes, finished 24 for 27. NIU plays almost all zone coverage. If they don't get pressure up front, he will pick them apart. But it's not easy to get pressure on this guy. He loves to throw the screens and the quick passes, and he is mobile. So the scene has been set. The biggest game in the MAC this year is just moments away, and you won't want to miss two of the best receivers and returners in the country. Reese, expect hot offense on a cold evening here in Illinois. Eric, we are looking forward to it for sure. Glad to have you with us. We continue on our coverage, 19 days of football. Reese Davis, Mark May with you here in the studio. And on day 13 of our 19 days of football markets, a former number 13 who's landed a haymaker against his former school. Flashy cars, easy money, and bogus grades, all perks that former Ohio State running back Maurice Claret alleges to have received while he was a Buckeye. An ESPN the Magazine story written by Tom Friend details Claret's allegations, which include the fact that Buckeye head coach arranged for his running back to have loaner vehicles introduced him to wealthy boosters who lined his pockets with cash. Claret then further alleges that once the NCAA started asking questions, that Trestle and Ohio State turned their back on him. It's very important to note that both Trestle and Ohio State Athletic Director Andy Geiger have denied all of Claret's allegations. Now, Mark, when you look at this right now, I, I've been talking with a former representative of Claret's, and one of the stated goals of Team Claret has been to improve his perception with the NFL people. What does this do to the perception of Claret in the NFL? Well, it doesn't look good for Maurice Claret. If you're a person in his position right now, the NFL is a league that doesn't like controversies. They don't want bad publicity. Why would you come out and make these accusations at this time during the season for Ohio State? When the NFL looks at this, he did not help his draft stock. He hurt his draft stock. We'll talk more about this at halftime. You will hear from Maurice Claret. You'll also hear from Andy Geiger from Ohio State. Hear some of the allegations that Claret has made and some of the responses to them. Mark and I will talk about the motivation more and what the impact could be long term on Ohio State's program. That's coming up at halftime. Right now, we're ready for a little football and one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the nation, Bruce Gradkowski, leading Toledo against Northern Illinois in a few moments. Brigham Field here at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois. And for a quick chat with the head coach for Northern Illinois, let's go down to the field in Holly Rowe. Thanks, Eric. We're here with Northern Illinois coach Joe Novak. And Coach Novak, this is a big game. It's advertised all over town. Why is it so important for your team? Well, eight years ago, we set a goal up, Holly, to try to win a Mid-American Conference Championship. And it always goes through Toledo in our division. So beating Toledo is what you have to do. So that's what we have to try to get done tonight if we're going to do that. It got a little tougher without your starting tailback, Garrett Wolf. How does that affect the team? Well, we've got two other pretty good running backs. A.J. Harris was our starter the first four games, and Adrian Davis has had a 100-yard rushing game, so we'll be all right, Holly. All right, thanks very much, Coach. Okay, Holly, thank you. Eric? Thanks, Holly. We've just seen Joe Novak. How about the other man? On the other sideline, it's Tam Am Tom Amstutz, called Toledo Tom, born and raised in Northwest Ohio. He is very proud to be coaching his alma mater now in his fourth season. He's won more than twice of the times more than he has lost. 33 and 14. NIU will kick off. Chris Nendick will get us started. Both teams with opportunities to win the Mac West. And the kickoff high deep and out of the back of the end zone. Toledo will receive. They will start at the 20. Taking the snap for the Toledo Rockets. The junior quarterback from Pittsburgh. Bruce Gradkowski has been sensational. In his two years as a starter, he is very accurate, throws a lot of screens, a lot of short passes, but he does it very effectively. And Eric, this kid, a great basketball player in high school. The other thing, he probably runs about a 4 5 40, so he is a talented quarterback. They start with two receivers, flanked to the right. And the handoff right up the gut on the first play of the game. Not going very far. Actually, Greg Kowski kept the football and picked up just a couple. Let's take a look at the Toledo offense. Scooter McDougal getting his second consecutive start. We'll be talking a lot about Lance Moore, kid from Columbus, Ohio. He's Toledo's all-time leader in catches and yards. And up front, Nick Kayser 
He is an absolute beast. He is trying to become the first Toledo player ever to be four-time All-Mac. Second down. This time, Gradkowski. Little shovel pass. Gets it over to McDougal. McDougal with first down yard. Flag is down on the field. We'll have to see if that first down holds up. Let's take a look to see how NIU lines up defensively. Ken West, the alert of him. He leads the team with eight sacks and ten tackles for losses. Linebackers, Jason Hawkins was a tremendous tailback in the Chicagoland area. He's now been switched to linebacker, and he's doing a good job as a senior. And Rob Lee may be the best athlete on the entire NIU defense. He is their best cover corner. He will be lined up on Lance Moore very often throughout the course of the evening. Eric, right off the bat, we see why a lot of people say Toledo is the best screen-passing team in the country. That time they had the middle screen or shuffle pass. Unfortunately, they were called for holding. Sets them back to second down and 15. It negates a gain of 13. That's up to second and 14 now. Again, a fake of the inside handoff, and Brad Kowski keeps it himself and doesn't go too far. Stop on the play is made. And it'll bring up a third down and long. We said Bruce Gretkowski was an excellent runner. This time, the predetermined quarterback run or the wrap play, they fake it to the running back. You're going to see Gretkowski lead it up in there. But an excellent tackle right here. Should have been holding right there on the big offensive tackle. The predetermined quarterback run. Five receivers in the game for the Rockets. Empty backfield. Gradkowski with time throws over the middle incomplete big stick on the play and the pass is knocked away Ray Smith with the force let's go down field level where Holly Rowe has more in the punting situation for Toledo well, guys, Brett Curran, the starting punter for Toledo, is out with mononucleosis. He does have an enlarged spleen, so he did not make the trip and cannot punt. The problem, Robbins, who is punting in his stead, has only punted once in his entire career. He was never a punter in high school or in college. He has one punt to his record. They went for it eight times last week because of that situation. But right now, as you see, because of field possession, he has to punt. And this punt is not very good, Holly. It goes to the 30. Takes a friendly bounce out to the 36, but that's it. 18 yards on the second career punt for Mr. Robbins. Gives wonderful field position to the NIU Huskies. So, NIU takes the field offensively for the first time. Their quarterback, kid from Cleveland, Ohio, just outside in Madison, along the shores of Lake Erie, Josh Haldy. Haldy has been a winner in the three years he has been the starting quarterback for Joe Novak. He's a very smart guy, close to a four-point GPA. A.J. Harris, the back behind him. They want to throw on first down, and it's complete. The big fella, Jake Nordine, with the catch. Gain of eight on first down. Let's take a look at the rest of the starting lineups for NIU. A.J. Harris getting the start in place of Garrett Wolf. He has started before. This is his fifth start of the year. Up front, the big boys. Take a look at the right guard, Matt McGacky. If you got those letters in Scrabble, you throw them back. No vowels. Six letters, no vowels. That's hard to do. That's the longest vowel-less name in NIU football history, if that means anything to you at all. Second down and short. Haldy to the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Chatone Powers. And it's now third and short. Defensively. This is how the Rockets of Toledo line up. They've had their troubles up front. They're very young. They're two defensive tackles. Martin and Pollard, both are freshmen. They will be tested against that good ground attack for Northern. And Eric, really, two inside linebackers, Anthony Jordan, David Thomas, and two rovers. They really play a 4-2-5 defense. The two corners, Nigel Morris and Antonio Malone. Patrick Bode, the free safety, safety the leading tackle. Nordine with the screen. And he doesn't go very far. Actually loses yardage. It's a loss of two. And that'll bring up fourth down. And it looks as if the decision's already been made, Coach. They're going to go for the field goal. I don't think there's any question because they do have momentum early in this football game. A little bit out of character for NIU right there, Eric, throwing that football on three consecutive downs. They do have the wind at their back right here. 
Chris Nendick will need it. This is a 47-yard field goal attempt. Kick is up, and kick is true. No problem for Nendick. And NIU grabs an early 3-0 lead without the benefit of a first down. No question the, took advantage of the wind at his back and just drilled it as we look at the excellent field goal attempt. But go back to the fourth down poor punt by Toledo. And amazingly, Eric, Toledo with punting problems last week against Miami, they went for it nine times on fourth down. I don't know that I've ever heard of that in the history of college football, going for it on not for nine times. But you see why Tom Amstutz last week did that. They are really struggling in the punting department, and that led to Northern Illinois being up 3-0 in this football game. Well, Joe Novak's got to be happy, at least, that his team's on the board early. They received a, a shocking bit of information just earlier today, finding out that their star tailback, Garrett Wolf wouldn't play. It means so much, I'd imagine, Coach, the fact that they can get the early lead when you have a little bit of disorder going through your pregame routine, finding out your star's not playing. Exactly. There's no question that that is a distraction. But this football team has been through a lot, particularly Joe Novak in his seven years here at NIU. They've got a bunch of seniors on this ball club, and sometimes a little distraction like that, Eric, could be a good thing. But you're right, particularly if the game starts out in a positive way, that rallies the troops. Offensively, do they change anything with A.J. Harris back there as opposed to Garrett Wolf? We didn't see a run on their first possession. Well, first of all, I said out of character. I mean, NIU wants to line up and run that football. They're 10th in the country in rushing offense. That really is Toledo's weakness, rush defense. No, they're going to line up and run the football. And this A.J. Harris is a talented guy. Runs a 4 3 9 40. He was the starter earlier in the season. So what a great way for a guy right now to put the final chapter on this season, come back after, after having been beat out. This kickoff, Shortish picked up 18-yard line and carried out across the 25 by Jalen Parmalee. Seven yards on that return, and Bruce Gradkowski and the Rockets will begin their second possession offensively. And last night, having a chance to visit with Bruce Gradkowski, I loved him on tape. I love him even more after visiting with him in person. You know, he's a Pittsburgh guy. Grew up in <laughs> Pittsburgh, and uh, he is no doubt a talented guy, but I think really a tough guy. And I think we'll have a bright NFL future, but he's got Northern Illinois on his mind right now. It was three and out the first time that Gradkowski had the football. Hand off, Scooter McDougal. Not much doing. Left side of that line, gain of three. And Eric, as we watch this game unfold, I think right now the matchup is... Toledo's offense, NIU on defense will play a lot of zone with two deep safeties. So there's really only seven in the box. The temptation right now for Toledo to try to run it, but in the end, it's going to come down to Drakowski throwing that football, even though it is only a seven-man front. Radkowski, little play fake. Rolls right, has a man, pass complete. Steve Odom, his first catch, the sophomore from Columbus with a modest gain, call it a gain of seven, and it's going to be good enough for a first down. Eric, something you're going to see all night. These corners from NIU pressed, but they're really playing quarters coverage with zone coverage behind it. And right here, you're going to see the corner bailout in coverage. The linebacker could not get to the flat, and Grakowski does an excellent job throwing on the run. First first down for either team tonight. Again, a play fake. Rolling right, Grakowski again. Complete with a shortish pass. This one to Chris Holmes. And this big Chris Holmes, 275 pounds. That's his 19th catch of the season. Plays a lot of roles for him. And keep in mind, Toledo's number one tight end, Andrew Clark, who was a star last year, out for the season, Eric, with a hip injury. He was a good one. All Mac first team a year ago. But he's getting a medical red shirt. Andrew Clark will be back manning the tight end spot, you'd imagine, next year for the Rockets. 
another incom another complete pass. Lance Moore with his first catch. Toledo's all-time leading receiver with his first grab of the night. We see the press coverage with Adriel Hansborough, number 12, up there playing bump and run. But the bottom line, just a little short comeback route right there. And Lance Moore, one of the most productive receivers I've seen in college football. Lance Moore, a senior a year ago, had 103 catches. This year, he's got 66, including the one just a moment ago. Again, the play fake, rolling right, Brad Kowski. Intercepted! Jimmy Toussaint with the interception. The freshman is first of the year. And everything is going right for the NIU Huskies so far this evening. Toussaint, the freshman, comes up with the big pick. Again, the play-action pass. Rakowski, just a poor decision right here, underthrows that football, and that's out of character for Grakowski. Only his fifth interception of the season. So, Bruce Gradkowski, normally so accurate, throws it up for grabs, and the first turnover of the game belongs to NIU. with the football he's very quick he gets out to the 35 before he's stopped by Anthony Jordan Dan Sheldon Northern Illinois best football player a great punt returner and you have to give Joe Novak credit right now and Rob Spence the offensive coordinator Eric they're doing the unexpected and really kind of opening this game up, which is out of character. Second down and short. A.J. Harris, his first carry. Will Juke step, gets out across the 45. Good yards on his first carry, gain of 10. Again, they come with the fake reverse action this time. And you're going to watch A.J. Harris on the cutback. The reason they're faking those reverses, Toledo an eight-man front, Eric, with those two rovers up there. They're trying to keep those rovers from cheating in there in the box and stopping in the run. So that is a plan to soften up the perimeter of this defense. Again, A.J. Harris. Again, A.J. Harris with big yards. This time, a 13-yard gain. Toledo comes into this game 77th in the country in rush defense. And right there, you see an excellent block by Brian Van Ecker, the offensive guard. And you have to wonder right now, Garrett Wolf is somewhere licking his chops right now because he'd love to have a little piece of this 77th ranked rush defense. They keep feeding the horse. A.J. Harris this time tripped up after a gain of a couple of yards. Call it three. Patriot just joining us. Garrett Wolf will not play. Garrett Wolf, a big part of what Northern Illinois has done over the last couple of weeks. Six consecutive 100-yard games, three consecutive 200-yard games, but he was involved in an off-the-field altercation a couple of days ago. He's got an eye injury. He is not suited up this evening. So Joe Novak has to go to his second teamer and A.J. Harris. And so far, he has bedeviled Tom Amstutz and the Toledo Rockets. Screen set up. Ball loose. Trying to get it to A.J. Harris, and he couldn't corral it. And, and right now, if you're Tom Amstutz, what you're concerned about, NIU, Eric, is a lot like the University of Minnesota. The way they run the outside, outside zone play, the way they run play action, and in the first game of the season, Toledo gave up 415 yards rushing and 704 total yards and 63 points to Minnesota. So a lot of that same scheme. Now, I'll say this. Toledo has matured on defense, but they have their work cut out for them tonight because it's a very similar scheme that they had early in the season. Here comes the blitz. Man trumped him. They get it out to Harris. Harris close to first down yards, but not quite there. It's going to bring up an interesting situation on fourth down. Coach, you've been there and done that. What happens on fourth down and two? <laughs> well, 
it's obvious what Joe Novak is going to do on fourth down and two, and he's looking at a guy, Tom Amstats, right there, that went for it nine times last week on fourth down. So I think this is a good call right now. I mean, momentum clearly on the side of Northern Illinois. Let's see if they try and pound it. The Rockets are stuffing the box right now. The Huskies go right after it, and they get it. Plowing forward, the junior, A.J. Harris, looks to have it up the arch for a first. And they do, so the chains move, much to the pleasure of Joe Novak, coaching in his 100th game as the head man at Northern Illinois. Good crowd here at Husky Stadium. Late arriving crowd. About 10 minutes before the game. Didn't look like we were going to get close to a sellout, but now we're almost there. On first down, Haldi wants a bunch. Has a man, has a completion down to the one. Dan Sheldon with the catch. Dan Sheldon runs a 4-3-7-40, and he is going to run a post route right